you would like to accomplish at YSU? Well, you never know what an image is. I don't know that an image is important. I think what's real is important, you know, and, and you know, I think our family does care about the community and, and care about serving and care about doing good, you know, to put it in a simple way. Uh, you know, whether or not we're doing, doing that well, that's not for us to judge, but... Uh, uh, following the game, but that has now changed. What have you heard? Well, here's the deal. A Cincinnati radio station said as soon as the game is over, Coach Tressel is there. A, a newspaper report now says Notre Dame assistant Rick Minner is the guy who will get the job. My bet is that it'll be Minner, and Coach Tressel will be back here to try and win another championship next year. Enjoy the game. It's coming up next. Join us after the game for postgame. So long, everyone. The Championship Crunch 3. YSU Penguins versus the Thundering Herd of Marshall University. The rematch. Our extended coverage is brought to you by WKBN and Michael's Ribs and Steaks, the delicious side of the Magic Twanger. Today, it's round three for Youngstown State and Marshall in the Division 1AA championship game. In 1991, Marshall led by 11 in the fourth quarter, only to watch the title slip away. Youngstown State scored 19 points in the final stanza and survived a last-second Marshall scoring chance to win the national championship. But that was only the beginning. Last year, the thundering herd and penguins locked up in a battle for the ages. Again, the herd thundered to a big lead. Led by quarterback Michael Payton, Marshall led 28-0 in the second half. And again, YSU responded. Tamron Smith's third TD tied the game at 28. Then at nail-biting time, all eyes were on the foot of Willie Merrick, who had never kicked a collegiate field goal until it mattered most. Two memorable games. Both teams have experienced sports' ultimate high and its lowest low. Today, they meet again for game three. Sports welcomes you to Marshall University Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia for the Division I AA Football National Championship game. For the third straight year, it's the Youngstown State Penguins and the Thundering Herd of Marshall. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, and it's great to have you with us. Certainly, it's remarkable that two teams could get to a national championship game three years in a row. As a matter of fact, at all levels of college football, it's the first time that the same two teams have made it to the championship game for the third straight year. I'm joined by Dan Jiggets. He's familiar with these two teams, and Dan, certainly the two teams are familiar with each other. And the coaches tell us in preparing for this year's game, they've taken on a look of almost being mirror images of each other. Well, it really is true. You talk about the running games of both teams. Tamaron Smith is a guy that's going to be rushing the football today for Youngstown State. He rushed for over 1,300 yards already this season. He's running behind an experienced offensive line, 300 pounders up front. One guy has 57 starts already under his belt. Expect to see that Marshall linebacking crew really pay a lot of attention to the running game. The strategy for Youngstown State the last two years has been to use that big offensive line and the running of Tamron Smith to wear down Marshall for those fourth quarter comebacks. Marshall a bit more balanced on offense, but they do feature the best rusher in the Southern Conference this year in the sophomore Chris Parker. And Chris Parker's rushed for 1,700 yards on the season. Uh, the key to this game, though, may be how well Todd Dunn and the quarterback of Marshall is able to throw the football against an experienced secondary of Youngstown State. This is a home game for Marshall University. But the Penguins have been here before. Last year, in fact, when they lost the heartbreaker in the championship game. This year, the Penguins come in at 12 and 2 in the playoffs. Wins over Central Florida in the first round. Georgia Southern in the second. And Idaho last week in the semifinals. And 
hidden from view but ready to take the field before the standing room only crowd the thundering herd of Marshall 11 and 3 coming in wins in the playoffs over Howard Delaware and undefeated Troy State 24 21 last week in the semifinals all the scoring in that game was in the first half. led by head coach Jim Donnan in his fourth year at Marshall. They didn't make the playoffs in his first year at six and five. They've been in the championship game the last three seasons. We'll have the opening kickoff of the Division I AA National Championship game from Huntington, West Virginia, right after this. Everybody knows about Marshall University football, but that's just part of the story. Our winners also include nearly 13,000 eager students, challenging academic programs, reasonable costs, a great campus, a beautiful city, and an unbeatable attitude. At Marshall University, building winners is a way of life. A standing room only crowd of better than 30,000 on hand at Marshall University Stadium. We're pleased to be joined down on the sidelines today by Jim Gray. Jim? Sean, there's some significant support by some very accomplished football people for these two teams. First for Youngstown State, Eddie DeBartolo Jr., the owner of the San Francisco 49ers, is a resident of Youngstown, Ohio. Well, he came by practice and gave a pep talk, and then this morning he also sent a telegram of his support. Now for Marshall, head coach Jim Donnan and Bill Parcells coached together back in 1972 on the Florida State staff. Well, Parcells called yesterday with some advice and some strategy. The two have exchanged phone calls in each of one another's big games as the years have gone on. Now as for the field, it rained here this morning. The field is wet, but the footing will be fine. Sean? As Jim mentioned, it has rained off and on, and there is... The decent chance of more rain this afternoon. 42 degrees, the temperature at kickoff. Marshall won the toss and deferred its decision to the second half, so Youngstown State will receive, and David Merrick will kick off. Darnell Clark is back to receive it. He's a senior from Canton, Ohio. Round three for Youngstown State and Marshall about to begin with the national title on the line. Merrick is a left footer. He did not appear in the championship game last year due to a disciplinary suspension. His brother Willie kicked the game winning field goal. And Merrick sends the opening kickoff out of bounds. So excellent field position for Youngstown State to begin the game at the 35-yard line. The officials provided by the Gateway Conference. Steve Newman is the referee. And he's just making sure that Youngstown State wants it at the 35, and they will take it there. We have illegal procedure. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball will be put in play at the 35-yard line, first and 10. The question mark coming into the season for the Penguins, the quarterback, Mark Brungard, the sophomore from New Middletown, Ohio. He's responded to the challenge, and the team is here again in the championship game. It is a big offensive line led by Drew Gerber, a first-team AP All-American. And as Dan Jiggett's mentioned, two 1,000-yard rushers in the backfield, Don Swistler is the leading receiver. Mark Brungard, 6'1", 202 pounds. As you might expect on the first play, it's Tamron Smith. First down out near midfield. A gain of 14, Roger Johnson, the free safety, made the tackle for Marshall. The weakness of the Marshall defense is in the middle of the front four. They're concerned about Billy Lyon and Byron Turner. Rodney Garrett is outstanding. The strength of the defense, the linebacker core, William King was the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Just made All-American. And in the secondary, Reynolds and Cunningham are redshirt freshman corners, but Jim Donnan says the biggest improvement this year on defense for Marshall has been pass defense. Darnell Clark. He's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Yeah. 
51 yards on the second play from scrimmage. The Youngstown State Penguins are on the board. Good crisp blocking up front with the offensive line. Watch the gaps that they open up here. Look on that right side of your screen. See that huge hole? That's the kind of running that Darnell Clark likes. When you can get downfield, you see it, and then you can break it back. That's exactly what he did. Broke it back against the grain and took off for a touchdown. You've got to jump on Youngstown early if you're the defense because you want to put him in a long situation. So far, Clark has not done that. The extra point knocked through by Jeff Wilkins. And just 33 seconds into the game, Youngstown has a 7-0 lead. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Championships is sponsored by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality. John Hancock, official life insurance sponsor of the 1994-1996 U.S. Olympic teams. And by Sprint, the official telecommunications provider for the NCAA. Shari mentioned earlier how important it was to get the blocking up front to pick up the linebackers. Watch Drew Gerber here chip off the block here, and Coco's here chip out his man. And all of a sudden, Darnell Clark has plenty of room to run. The key block, though, Gerber, 62 right there on the linebacker. Shannon King takes him out of the picture, and Clark is gone. A 51-yard touchdown run. Two plays, 65 yards on the scoring drive. It took just 33 seconds. And the Penguins of Youngstown State have a 7-0 lead. And Jeff Wilkins will kick off. This year he's doubling as both punter and place kicker. Back to receive it is Tim Martin. who had a huge kickoff return in the last minute of their second round win over Delaware to set up the game-winning field goal in the final second. Wilkins drives it over the head of Eric Thomas and through the end zone. And Marshall will get the ball for the first time today at its own 20-yard line. Led by junior quarterback Todd Donnan. He is the son of head coach Jim Donnan and his wife Mary. The offensive line anchored by Chris Deaton, who's making his 56th consecutive start at Marshall. Parker and Pedro. The running backs behind Donnan. Todd Donnan, six feet, 185 pounds. Out of the shotgun on the first play and throws it out to the near side to Ricky Carter. He stopped after a gain of two to the 22. Reggie Lee made the tackle for the Penguins. It's a 3-4 defense for Youngstown State. David Birch, the defensive end, is the best of the defensive linemen. He's a Syracuse, New York native. Leon Jones is the leading tackler for Youngstown State. Reggie Lee is second in tackles for the Penguins. And it's a veteran secondary of Brown, Weaver, Mason, and Smith. Jim Tressel in his eighth season as head coach at Youngstown State. Double-A playoff six of the last seven years. Donnan looking to throw again. And now he runs for a gain of one, tackled by David Birch, number 98. David one thing Birch. about both of these passing attacks is both quarterbacks have the ability to get out and scramble a little bit if they can't find anything downfield. Interesting thing about Marshall offensively is how well balanced, we mentioned in the open, how well balanced the, uh, the uh, offense is for uh, Marshall. 178 yards either passing or, or running the football during the course of the regular season. Coaches say they strive for balance on offense, and Marshall was perfectly balanced this year coming into this game. 178 yards per game, both rushing and passing. Looks like a quarterback draw, and Youngstown wasn't fooled by it. Donnan dropped back on the 20-yard line by Andre Jethro, a true freshman out of Warren, Ohio. He's a nose guard, and he just played it like he should. If you're a nose guard, you want to spy on that quarterback. And watch Dun uh, Todd Dunnan here. He's just going to kind of casually drop back, and the nose tackle's all over that Jethro. That's a good name for a nose tackle, you know? Mm. <laughs> Andre Jethro. Defensive coordinator John Haycock says he's as talented as any middle guard that they've had in the Trestle era. Trouble on the punt, and 
dropped back at the five-yard line was Travis Colquitt. They had a similar problem last week in the semifinals against Troy State. There is a penalty flag on the play. It's a holding call against Marshall. Undoubtedly, that'll be turned down, and Youngstown State will get the ball at the six-yard line. And it appeared that the holding call came from the right side of the formation, the punt formation. Hope didn't have a chance. Alfred Hill, number 58. Looks like the guy that got it. Here's Coquit again, and you can tell right now he doesn't have a chance. He sees right away. He tries to get out hills all over him, number 58. Youngstown State has blocked six punts this year. This time they tackle the punter Colquitt. And already leading seven to nothing, the Penguins have a first and goal at the six. We've played only two and a half minutes here in Huntington, West Virginia. Youngstown State had plenty of success in the first half this year, but not in the championship games against Marshall the last two years. It's been the herd that has taken a big lead the last two years. It's 13 nothing now as Tamron Smith punches it in from six yards up. Speaking with uh, Mark Asher, the run game coordinator for Youngstown State before the ball game, said this weather is perfect for his road graders. It's 300 pounds. You know, they, they don't uh, get a whole lot of sweat going and all the rest of that. They can just line up the whole ball game and match it. And that's exactly what they're doing right now to the Marshall front. They've only run three plays from scrimmage. They have 13 points on the board. Wilkins makes it 14. <laughs> Another look at that touchdown run. Watch the big guys up front. Remove the line of scrimmage and replace it with a running back. He takes off into the end zone. They just erased it. 53rd career touchdown for Smith. That's a Youngstown State record. On the last two Division I AA championship games, it's been Jim Donnan's thundering herd has jumped off the big early lead. Watch Youngstown State come back. Today, Marshall will have to come from behind if the herd is to win the national championship. The good news for them, they have a pretty strong passing game, so you can get back in a hurry. Jim Tressel, the 40-year-old head coach, has Jeff Wilkins on the field to kick off. Youngstown State leads 14 to nothing. And again, it's Tim Martin back deep. Wilkins, a senior from Austintown, Ohio, in the Youngstown area. Martin from the six. And he's taken down at the 24-yard line. Tom Dillingham made the tackle on special teams with Chris Inglis. Let's go back to that touchdown, Sean. I want to show you something here. We're watching the block of Ray Miller, number 78, the off guard. He's going to pull over. The, this is what they call zone blocking, folks. When everybody pulls to an area, blocks the, the guy in that area. But watch 78 Miller. That's the key block that really springs his running back. Right there, he nails his man. And all of a sudden, you find your running back is in the end zone. Beautiful. Cameron Smith gave the Penguins a 14-0 lead. Parker tripped up. He gained one. Leon Jones, the sophomore from Akron, made the tackle for Youngstown State. He comes in as the leading tackler for the Penguins with 167 tackles in the 14 game. And he's the inside linebackers. What that means is that the linebackers are really shifting over and getting in front uh, of the running attack of the Thundering Herd. He played every play last week against Idaho. Jim Trussell said after the game he'd play nine quarters if we'd let him. <laughs> Second and nine for Todd Donnan and the Marshall offense. Donnan, the quick pass complete to Will Brown. He stopped close to a first down out at the 33-yard line. He appears to be about a yard short. The Youngstown players saying there was a fumble, but the officials do not concur. It's third down. Ran a little clearing route there, Sean, and uh, almost like a pick. You, know, you run the inside receiver up the field and bring the outside guy up underneath. It's early in the game, but certainly 
Marshall could use a momentum turner. And third down in the long one, nearly two yards to go for the first down. And they run the option. Parker tripped up, has the first down. He got across the 35-yard line. Jeff Powers tripped him up. And let's check in with Jim Gray. Sean, Jim Dunnan told the offense before they went on the field, hey, let's just concentrate on getting a first down, and they just did that. He said, you guys haven't done anything wrong. Let's just act like the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Go out and try and establish ourselves. Sean? That's really, you know, that's the way you have to approach things because you, they certainly haven't done anything wrong. They said fate has gone against them so far. It's the way you get back in the ball game. Donnan takes the toss to Parker. He's looking deep down the middle, nearly intercepted. Leon Jones got his hands on it. He's the team leader in interceptions as well with four. Youngstown State has picked off 19 passes this year in 14 games. They're trying to go to Ricky Carter, number 23, and this is an ill-advised pass from the beginning to end. Watch on the right side of your screen. You'll see the coverage by Jones, the inside linebacker, number 50. He's just waiting there, laying in the weeds in a little zone coverage, and almost pops up and picks this one off. With three men around that football. Leon, the leading tackler on the defense for the hurt for the uh, Penguins. With 35 tackles more than any other YSU's player. Pedro's in big trouble and down for a big loss. Back at the 23-yard line, Alfred Hill made the play. You want to see an ugly sight if you're Glenn Pedro? Pull around that corner and look at Alfred Hill, number 48, staring you in the face. This is a guy that has the ability to play on the next level. Watch him. It's about 250 pounds playing linebacker, and about six foot two, and as you can see, excellent speed to pursue the ball carry. Loss of nine. Alfred Hill, one of six Youngstown State captains this year. Out of a great high school football program, McKinley High School in Canton, Ohio. On third and 19, Donnan has a man open. Youngstown State content to give the short pass to Will Brown, but that's well short of a first down out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Leon Jones is the guy in on the stop once again. We've mentioned his name about five or six times in the ball games. very young. So Cole quit. Is back on the field, having been tackled by Alfred Hill on his first punting try. Trent Boykin will field the punt. He's a junior from Kent, Ohio. The name Colquitt sounds familiar. It should. They have quite a family history in punting. Uncle Craig punted for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Crowd wanted a flag as there was contact with Colquitt, and Boykin is thrown down at the 25-yard line. 39-yard punt and no return. And he got stuck when he let that ball, when he kicked the ball away. Let's see if uh, you think this was roughing or not. Ball's away. Uh, he was hanging on that one leg a little yes, bit too long. Sure was. <laughs> Youngstown State will have it when we come back. In the last two championship games between these two teams, neither team scored a point in the first quarter. That is certainly not the case today as the Penguins have jumped off to a 14-0 lead. And we played less than six minutes here in Huntington, West Virginia. Sean McDonough with Dan Jiggets and Jim Gray. The Penguins have it first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Don Zwissler in motion. Cameron Smith. Rolls out to the 32. A gain of seven on first down for the senior from Youngstown, Ohio, out of South High School, which no longer exists. They closed the doors on South High School at the end he's of the last running enough, of year. He's running enough to open them back up. Drew Gerber, we've been talking about him, number 62 on that offensive line for Youngstown. Watch him come around here on a pull and take out Shannon King, the linebacker. King eventually makes the stop, but it's about four or five yards later. That's the key. Get your guards out there. Those linebackers have to step up a little bit more, be a little bit more aggressive if they help you stop the running attack. Smith, first down. Out near the 37-yard line before Rodney Garrett made the stop. 
<laughs> 83 yards for Youngstown, minus 23 rushing for Marshall, and the Penguins better score soon, Dan, because they're going to ruin their average of scoring per play. Per, per play and per quarter, because, uh, uh, you know, typically these two teams in the championship games have not scored the first quarter. Mm -hmm. First and ten for Mark Brungard. He's the third different starting quarterback in as many years for Youngstown State in the national championship game. He alluded two defenders behind the line, but then got thrown down after a very short game by Donahue Stevenson. Well, quarterback fake there by Brungard, and he took off around in. Watch him, number 12, the quarterback, as he fakes the uh, pull over to the uh, right side, then tries to roll left. And uh, the defense of, of uh, Marshall will have none of that. Stop made by Donahue Stevenson. He's a senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He was born in Jamaica in his fourth year as a starting linebacker for Marshall. Credit Brungard with a gain of one, second and nine. Midway through the first quarter, 14 nothing, Youngstown State. Brungard sets up the screen to Clark. And he's tackled from behind by William King, the All-American linebacker out of Charleston, West Virginia. We spoke with him uh, the other day. You knew he was ready for a big game, especially after what he went through last season when he got knocked out of this ball game. He's number three over the top of your screen, plays the screen beautifully, comes crashing in, and then reacts back out to stay up with the receiver. What Youngstown will do is run some unbalanced stuff, and that's why you'll see him sinking in there a little bit. King was knocked unconscious 52 seconds into the second half last year. Went to the hospital. It was very frightening as he remained on the field for quite a while, but x-rays to his neck and back proved negative. He returned to the stadium just in time to see the game-winning field goal by Willie Merrick. Third and ten. Rungard on target and very close to a first down. Frank Boykin made the catch at 5-5 five, five. along the friendly Youngstown State sideline. Juan Reynolds made the tackle, but it is good for another first down for the Penguins. Trent Boy can climb the step ladder to get this one, but the key was a uh, blitz protection because uh, you're going to see the blitz on the right side of your screen. You see William King coming number three. That's picked up by Tamron Smith. That allows the quarterback to go out to the opposite side and complete the pass to Boykin. Trent only 5-5, five, five, 151 pounds. In his third year as a starter. He had a big catch in the 91 title game against Marshall down in Statesville, Georgia, won by the Penguins. Clark trying to turn the corner. And a good play by Reynolds coming up from his corner to make the play after a gain of two. Now they're starting to play that outside run, the pitch plays and all the rest of that a little bit better. Getting some uh, some people pursuing from inside, as well as getting safety support, and corner support. Seven yards to go. Darnell Clark wasn't around long himself in the championship game last year. He went out in the first quarter of last year's championship game with a sprained ankle. Credit Clark with a gain of three, second and seven. Six twenty-five remaining in the first quarter. 14-0 Youngstown State in the Division I AA National Championship game. Run guard wide open the tight end, John Quintana. He has a first down in Marshall territory at the 37-yard line. Watch Mark Brungard get, a, get rid of this football. Once again, King is coming in on a, on a blitz. And watch him just look off right now, and boom, he's going to hit that pass. Unloads it very quickly, reads the blitz uh, very well. Quintana, an outstanding student, and that isn't giving him enough credit. 3.93 is his grade point average in marketing. He is the only person ever from Youngstown State to be nominated for a Rhodes Scholarship. Charles Perdue, a freshman, carries for the first time today. He got inside the 35 and was knocked out at the 33 by Donahue Stevenson. Remember, if you talk about Quintana's grade point average, Dan, uh -huh. 3.93, he told the coaches he wanted to get at least one B because he didn't want to graduate with a 4.0 grade point average and have <laughs> potential employers think that he was a little bit abnormal. <laughs> he was a nerd. That's right. <laughs> Not a so bad way to do it. one B to make it 3.93 as he heads to graduation. You know, it's kind of interesting what the Marshall players were going through even before the game. They were taking exams right up until uh, yesterday afternoon. 
They reported in their grades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second and seven, ninth play of the drive for Youngstown. Back to Tamron Smith. Flags thrown, and they'll stop the play. Good thing the, the officials did because Tamron wasn't stopping until he reached the pay dirt. He did take it all the way down to the end zone despite the whistles. He'll have a long walk back to the line of scrimmage. We had a running back that used to do that with the Bears, Walter Payton. Every day at practice, he'd take him a distance. Just got used to it. Did that a few times in the game. Yes, as he well. did. <laughs> 125, as I recall. This will be the first accepted penalty of the game as soon as Steve Newman and his crew settle it. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Little movement up front. You can see Brumgard trying to get things squared away. Uh, he wanted the, the formation the opposite way, and as a result, the tackles were just not set on that play. That was Paul Kokus. Second and 12. They give it to Darnell Clark. He got it back inside the 35. They'll spot him down at the 34-yard line. Shannon King, number 31, made the stop. There have been reports out of Cincinnati yesterday and today on radio and in the newspapers that this could well be Jim Tressel's last game as head coach at Youngstown State with his enormous success. His name comes up for so many of the Division 1A vacancies and reports have him heading to the Cincinnati Bearcats when this game is over. All that he would say before the game today is that he is getting on the bus and the plane and heading back to Youngstown with his team after the game today. Third down and eight. The approach five minutes left in the first quarter. Trent Boykin, room in the middle of the field. And another first down for Youngstown. And they rule that he was down uh, on contact. Joe Cherico made the tackle for Jim Donnan, but Boykin made it to the 25, first and 10, Youngstown State. What you saw there was Marshall load up and almost like a bear look, a 46 look, and put some pressure on the quarterback, uh, Brungard. Now, this play is a screenplay like Notre Dame used to run to Rocket Ishmael, a little underneath thing coming back to the uh, wide receiver. And Boykin does a nice job of catching the ball and avoiding a couple of would-be tacklers and getting some nice positive yardage. You see the ball come out as he went down to the ground. Boykin, along with Darnell Clark and Tamron Smith, brought home video cameras on the trip. They've been recording all the moments of the National Championship weekend. Tamron Smith will have another highlight to put on his reel as he's down to the 10-yard line. 15 yards for Tamron Smith and another first down. Tamron Smith, you cannot tackle him. I hope to tackle him with arm tackles. You've got to get your shoulder in and wrap him up now. I'm talking about arm tackles. Watch, you'll see a couple of tips right here. There's one attempt at an arm tackle. You cannot do that. Another one at an arm tackle. And it takes three guys to bring him down. Wrap him up. The Penguins continue to dominate on the ground. Shoot up nearly five minutes on this drive. This is the 13th play. They can pick up another first down inside the one. Clark turned back by Shannon King. Jim Tressel told us yesterday, before the reports out of Cincinnati, that he'd become the head coach of the Bearcats, that Cincinnati had asked permission for the athletic director at Youngstown State, Joe Malmasur, to speak with Tressel, but Jim has put off all talk with anybody interested in his services until the national championship game is over. He's had no contact mm -hmm. with Cincinnati. Now, uh, Murphy, coach, uh, coach Murphy that was there, went on to my alma mater, Harvard, uh, to Harvard, uh, mm -hmm. to replace Joe Restick, my college football coach when I was there back in the 70s. Great man. Second and six from the seven. Smith. Gets it inside the five before he was stacked up. Down to Hugh Stevenson at the bottom of the pile. Good selection there on the part of the Marshall defense. Uh, bringing those linebackers up, putting them right on the line of scrimmage and almost picking the exact spot where uh, Youngstown wanted to run the football. 14-0, Youngstown State. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Nice long sustained drive by Youngstown State. Third and four from just inside the five. Charles Perdue has come in as the tailback behind Smith. Option, run guard. Stop. 
short of the goal line and close to the first down at the one. Shannon King, another tackle for Marshall. You see Brungard before the, the, the ball was snapped, he checked around. Must have been a check with me situation and decided to go to the option. Why? Because the defense is loaded inside. So he figures I can get out to the perimeter and then maybe flip the ball out to my tailback, who is number 28. And uh, so now he's going to say, well, you know, let's get out to the perimeter and test the perimeter because all the linebackers are up inside. Jeff Wilkins will try a field goal as they were short of the first down. Brungard is the holder. It's a 19-yard try. From the right hash mark, Wilkins drives it through. Jim Trestle's Penguins have dominated the first quarter. And with a minute 53 remaining in period one, Youngstown State leads 17 to nothing. You know, you get the feeling as you talk to Jim Tressel and his uh, coaches and players he's got a really button-down organization. Mm -hmm. uh, not much gets past them. And same thing we said for Jim Dunn here at, uh, at Marshall's. What a fabulous job they've done on rebuilding, of, you know, putting in a new stadium and, and all the rest at the uh, athletic facility here at the in one of the end zones is, uh, I think, unparalleled probably in Division II uh, college football. We have just received word in our truck here in Huntington, West Virginia, from the folks at the University of Cincinnati. They have called a press conference for 4 o'clock this afternoon to name their new head football coach, and they said they expect that their new head football coach will be at that press conference. Now, it is possible that you could get from Huntington, West Virginia to Cincinnati in that amount of time. It's only a short flight, but Jim Tress will really have to hurry if he's the guy. <laughs> he has to get on the Concord. <laughs> Tim Martin is back to receive the kickoff. It's about 254 miles. Jeff Wilkins. Another high kickoff. Comes down to Martin at the nine yard line. He has a hole. And goes down to the 32. Ramon Amil made the tackle for Youngstown State. Coming up next is the NFL Today, followed by Dallas at the New York Jets as the Cowboys unleash Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith on the stingy defense of the Jets. That's after the one double-day football championship game here on CBS. Seventeen nothing Youngstown State. First and ten Marshall. At the 32 of the thundering herd. Chris Parker. Out to the 35. Tackled by Paul Kahn. Parker is sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia. He certainly has become the feature back as the year has gone along. But he said when the season started, he wasn't sure what his role would be. He only carried five times mm -hmm. in the opening game against Moorhead State. Yeah, and then he, boy, he picked it up the second ball game. The defense over on the Marshall sideline trying to figure out where the wheels came off and maybe how to get some new ones. Uh, but I think that they have to move the linebackers up a little bit more, uh, closer to the line of scrimmage and slide a little bit more. They're getting trapped inside. That was Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator, making the adjustment. Second and seven. Todd Donnan throws. And it is dropped. Incomplete. Official on the near side waited for help from his counterparts. I was Bill trying to Brown, help him out. See? I was trying to help him out a bit, Sean. We could tell from here, but I just wanted to make sure yeah. the, the other penguins That's started right. waving their arms. Well, the penguins really don't have arms. No, but there's a lot of penguins down there, though. About 65. Do you know how they got the nickname Penguins? No, that's that kind of State. an interesting story. Oh, 1931, the Youngstown State basketball team. Very affectionate group, for sure. <laughs> playing a game at West Liberty in the heat. Wasn't working in the gym. Ben Kanicki was a member of the Youngstown basketball team. This is third and seven for Donnan. And he has a little more running to do. He didn't get there. Went down at the 40. Needed to get to the 42. One of the fans in the stands remarked that the players looked like penguins in the gym without heat. Ben Kanicki doubled as a sports editor of the Youngstown State Papers and went back to write his account of the game in which he played. He repeated the quote that the players looked like penguins and the nickname has stuck ever since. Well, there you have it. There are the two penguins on the sideline. <laughs> 
than good on a stick. <laughs> I think we had that last night. <laughs> 19 seconds left in the first quarter. Colquitt not pressured this time. It's a good punt. Fair catch called for and made by Trent Boykin at the 16. 44-yard punt and no return. And Brungard and company back in business already up 17-0. Take a look at the uh, drives of Youngstown so far. Every time they've had the football, they've gotten points on the board. They started their own 35. Of course, the six off of that miscue and then their own 25. And they burned up a lot of time off the clock because uh, essentially when you look at the time, uh, really, uh, and that last drive was what, uh, seven minutes, 23 seconds. Mm -hmm. For the 14 plays. Seven seconds left in the quarter. And the handoff goes to Tamron Smith. And a flag is thrown, two flags thrown. They stacked them up at the line of scrimmage, but let's check out the hankies. It was thrown right into where they were tackling him, which would lead one to believe that perhaps they grasped the face mask or Rodney Garrett was sort of in there. Yeah, foul. yeah, Rodney got in there real quick. Uh, just kind of flashed across. There you go. Five yard face mask penalty. Sean, you saw Garrett just kind of slam into the line, and maybe that's the other thing that uh, Marshall will attempt to do here is uh, have that defensive line penetrate a little bit more. No, no. A look at the penalty. You see Garrett, number 88, the bottom of your screen, slants inside of Rhodes, uh, Cocos, and then, yeah, he grabbed a little bit of the face mask. That's why it was only a five-yard. Excellent play by him, though. And uh, good reaction off the ball. And they're summoning Mark Brungard back to the field. The officials, because it was a defensive foul, do not end the quarter. There'll be one more play, even though zero show on the clock. First and five after the face mask penalty. Smith stopped by the Kings, Shannon and William. They are not related. And that is the end of the first quarter. With the score, Youngstown State 17, Marshall nothing. We'll return to Huntington after this message from your local station. You're watching the Division I AA Football Championship on CBS. Join Jim Campbell and Jim Evans for post-game highlights and interviews on TV 27. Welcome back to Huntington, West Virginia. Youngstown State has jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead. In between quarters, Jim Trestle, the Youngstown State coach, gathered all of his troops together. He said, guys, you played a perfect quarter. Everything went well, but we've been in this position before. Don't relax. They've come back every time we've played them. Let's not put ourselves in a position where we have a big lead, thinking it's all too easy, and then fall behind. Sean? It has been easy, Dan. That's right, but you think about last year's game when the Thundering Herd jumped out to a 28 to nothing lead and then uh, only to lose it late in the ball game and have to kick a winning field goal at the end. This is second and three on the first play of the second quarter for the Penguins. Darnell Clark ran into Shannon King who corralled him for no game. That's what I'm talking about, those linebackers getting a little bit more aggressive up front, Sean. If you start firing those linebackers, it really breaks up the rhythm of zone blocking because it does not allow the offensive line time to react. Right now, you see those linebackers coming to the point of attack. King makes the tackle and body slams it. Watch the guys up front. See, they want to get a little bit of movement up there. If they can't get that movement off the line of scrimmage, that stymies the running game. Third down and three. The crowd trying to help the Thundering Herd defense. Option, run guard. First down. Out to the 29. He was the leading rusher for Youngstown State last week in the semifinal win over Idaho. Brungard rushed for 91 yards in that game. He only passed seven times. 
That was a particularly big game for Brungard. 91 of his 306 coming into today in that game last week. And look at the Idaho. averages on these guys. That's the thing that's fabulous, Sean. 6.1, uh, 5.0 for Tamron Smith. That's excellent when they're running the football. And they've used the ground game to pile up eight first downs. Marshall has had only one. Smith stopped, and a flag is thrown into the pile again. William King credited with the tackle. Billy Lyon, number 86, in the defense for the herd, saying it's holding. And at least on that play, he's a good official. <laughs> he made the correct call. Ten-yard penalty in the previous spot. First down. That backs the ball to the 19-yard line. First and 20. See, that's practice. Hold hands, see? Mm -hmm. Get used to the grippers. <laughs> Do they call that an igloo instead of a huddle? I guess they would. They call their home stadium in Youngstown, Stan Boss Stadium, the Ice Castle. Ice Castle. On first and 20, they keep it on the ground. And Purdue is tackled at the 24 by William King. It seems like there's a King on every stop, either Shannon or William. Mentioned that this is the third different starting quarterback in as many championship games for Youngstown. Rungard was a red shirt in 91 when Ray Isaac led the Penguins to the national title. He what was the backup to Nick Cochran last year when Youngstown State lost to Marshall in the championship game. In that game in 91, Sean, it was a story, you know, Youngstown was running the football very successful like they are uh, today, uh, but they we did not expect to pass out of them as much as uh, Ray Isaacs did that day. They had a great day. On second and 15, Tamron Smith for one yard, and that's it. Byron Turner, the nose guard at the bottom of the pile. Now you start to see some movement up there in that defensive line for Marshall. A little penetration, the linebackers sliding to the play. Expect to see Youngstown, they'll probe the outside now. That the inside running game, if they take that away from you, then you hit the outside with the options and the toss plays. Third down and 13. Youngstown State is three out of four on third down conversions to this point. They lead 17 to nothing early in the second quarter. Run guard scrambling. Was hit. No whistle. That's a free ball picked up by William King. Rodney Garrett knocked it free. King picked it up, and then King was tackled by Aaron Green, and that was close as to whether Brungard's arm was coming forward, and he's arguing the point with Steve Newman. You see, Garrett did the thing. He tried to strip the football, and that's what they teach defensive linemen. If you get near that quarterback, go for the football, knock it out of his hand, and that's exactly what uh, Garrett did. Rodney Garrett, number 88, will never give up on the playoff play action. Watch him keep pursuing the quarterback. Chases him down and then strips the ball out right about here. He comes over, knocks the ball. You see his hand go back. The ball pops out. King recovers it. Very close. The officials ruled his arm was not going forward. After the turnover, they hand it to Parker. And he got a couple. William, William, William King. King. <laughs> and motion inside guy, William. Another peek at it now. Let's watch the quarterbacks on Brumgarden and see if that arm uh, starts to come forward. Draws back. And no, it was taken out of there before his arm ever came forward. Parker game two on first down. The adjustments that maybe Matthews has been making seem to be helping the Marshall defense. Now it's up to Todd Donovan in the offense to put points on the board for the herd. Second and eight. They stick with Parker and he fumbled. Recovered by the Penguins. A simple toss and he couldn't handle it. And David Birch recovered the fumble for Youngstown State. Toss looks like it may have been a little low, but still you've got to get all over this football. You cannot allow it to sit there on the ground. Yeah, he's, he's going to try to pick it up and run with it, Chris Parker. Don't do that. Just get on the football at that point. Because you still get a field goal if nothing else. So 
after the turnover by the Penguins. Jim Donnan's team hands it right back. David Birch, the recovery senior from Syracuse, New York. Coach Tressel first knew of David when he was an assistant under Dick McPherson at Syracuse University. Smith to the 30 for a gain of three on first down. Shannon King again made the tackle. When I talked with David Birch yesterday, he told me he was going to do a couple of big things in the ball game. He promised me that, and uh, so he's delivered on one promise already. He's a 50-year senior, criminal justice major. And yesterday, he's interested in being a probation officer when he leaves Youngstown State. He certainly marshaled his forces for that one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 21 runs, only four passes for the Penguins. Second and seven. Smith upended by William King. And he's about a yard short of the first down. He went about three yards in the air and landed a yard short. Kind of interesting what happened there. Watch the motion come across. They're trying to loosen up uh, William King, number three, from his uh, outside linebacking position. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Start out with the motion, man, then come back in and watch this play here. Just takes Smith's legs out from underneath of him. Landed at the 36, a yard short of a first down. 10-10 left in the first half. 17-0 Youngstown State. And the Penguins facing third and one. They had too many men on the field. Darnell Clark just scurried off. Bullhouse backfield. And the first down picked up by the Penguins. Tamron Smith up the middle. He's the all-time leading rusher at Youngstown State. And it isn't even close. Tamron came into today's game with 4,757 career rushing yards. More than 1,100 more than anybody else in school history. He's what? had 3,000-yard rushing seasons in a row. He can make it 53 touchdowns with his TD today, and he's heading toward 100-yard game number 22. Those are some outstanding numbers. A lot of hard work for the 217-pound running back. running play and Smith took Shannon King for a ride. Tamron has two children he told us yesterday and he mm -hmm. wants us to say hello to young Tamron who's three years old and Tian a one-year-old daughter. Well, he's running for some business. <laughs> hey you know what's interesting a simple play like the last one they just ran Sean. Uh, watch that offensive line just keep moving and mashing and the net effect of that over the course of a ball game is the fourth quarter suddenly you find your defense just gas. They cannot stay in there against those 300 pounders. Second and five. A light drizzle has returned to Marshall University Stadium. Purdue slips down as he tried to cut along the hash mark. Went down for a loss back to the 41. It was William King in the neighborhood. I know you like baseball. I thought you were going to say he's safe at second. He was <laughs> safe at the 41-yard line. It was Charles <laughs> Purdue. He's a speedster, 10-5 in the 100 meters. And the rain gear is out. There have been a lot of games that in clement weather have each of these two teams this year. Jim Dunn saying that the uh, passing game of Marshall is not really negatively affected by uh, the inclement weather. They can go ahead and keep flinging the football. He says, as long as you keep the ball dry, we're in good shape. And Marshall still has hope for even if the rain continues. Third down and seven. Nearing eight minutes remaining in the first half. 17-0 Youngstown State. They blitzed, and it's incomplete. Could have been caught. It went right through the hands of Trent Boykin. And right past Jaron Reynolds, <laughs> number six in the secondary. There was a flag on the play. Dead ball foul. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. That's really a break for Youngstown State. Now we'll have another chance at the third down conversion. Can't turn those down. It would have been the first incompletion for Brungard. He's four for four. So far, Youngstown State has 11 first downs. They've all been by the run. Third down and 12.
Brungard slipped on a handoff, and Smith is stopped at the 35-yard line. Mark Brungard, watch him try to pull out, and the, the turf gets here. It looks like somebody stepped on his foot. His guard, maybe Gerber, number 62, stepped on his foot. Quarterback's got to move those dogs because the boys up front have to get to work. There was a fumble on the play. Smith was able to gather it back in after the missed handoff. Good punt by Wilkins. Fair catch made by Martin at the 20-yard line. 46-yard punt for Jeff Wilkins. And we'll return to Huntington, West Virginia, right after this. Welcome back to Huntington, West Virginia. The rain has started once again. It's been on and off this morning. Both of these teams have had a lot of success in bad weather, however. Youngstown State is 7-0. Marshall is 5-0. So, Sean, something's got to give. Let's go back upstairs. Maybe we can get Jim a hat. <laughs> He's going to feel like a penguin before the day <laughs> is over. Todd Donnan and the Marshall offense on the field. Youngstown State leads 17-0. Heard from its own 19, and Donnan's pass incomplete. He was pressured on a safety blitz by Andre Mason. And uh, Mason was uh, flying directly in his face and in the path of the football. Donnan three for six passing to this point. He's the only son of Jim Donnan, the head coach, and his wife, Mary. Todd has two sisters. The rest of the family stayed behind in Norman, Oklahoma. When Coach Donnan came from the Sooners as an assistant to be the head coach at Marshall, Jim Donnan was here in Huntington living in a hotel for 17 months so that Todd could finish his senior year in Norman. That pass is too high and incomplete. Intended for Tim Martin, Reggie Brown had good coverage. Now we test, uh, you see a test for the uh, secondary of uh, Youngstown State. It is an experienced secondary, even though they lost a couple of ball players from last year's team. Third and ten. Seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. The herd one for four on third down. Plenty of time this time, and Donnan's pass is on target. Tim Martin has a first down. Out at the 38, Lester Weaver made the tackle. That's a gain of 19. Tim Martin does a, a smart thing for a receiver. He finds a little area in the, in the zone. They're playing a three-deep zone. He settles down in the crease in between the linebackers and the deep people and makes the reception. He's a redshirt freshman from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. And watch here as the linebackers go into their drops, okay? Now, see that area in between the, the deep people? Right there, that's where Martin comes in and makes the catch on a little slant. Showing blitz and then backed off, and Parker crossed the 40. He's down at the 41 after a pickup of three. Chris, a sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia, out of Heritage High School, came in averaging better than five yards per carry. Today for Parker, six rushes for a total of five yards and the lost fumble. And credit the defense of Youngstown State for doing an excellent job. Show you on a couple of plays here what they're doing differently than, than Marshall was at the beginning of the ball game, and why Youngstown had you know, so much success running against them early on. Play action pass for Donnan, and it is caught in Penguin territory. Ricky Carter stopped at the 43 by Lester Weaver. 16 more for the Thundering Herd. Interesting to see them bite on play action because the run game really hasn't been a factor for Marshall so far in the ball game. And this is just a nice pass. He had to put it up a little bit high, but uh, Todd Dunnan did, but uh, he still was able to get it down to his receiver, Ricky Carter. You call him Little Ricky. There's another Ricky Carter who's a defensive lineman on the Marshall team. Little Ricky's 5'10, 160 pounds. More contact stadium security. For Selfo, the offensive coordinator said yesterday they need Ricky Carter to make some big plays. He had a chance to make another and drop the wide receiver screen. It's incomplete. That's what happens when you're trying to make big plays. You're looking for that area to run downfield. Take your eye off the football. 
Of course, the herd lost Troy Brown off last year's national championship team. He's now playing for Coach Donnan's good friend Bill Parcells with the New England Patriots. They're on a win streak, aren't they? The Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> they got two this season. It's been tough they on Bill up too. He's an excellent football coach. They've been close several times. Second and ten. 17 nothing Youngstown State. We're in the second quarter. Donnan runs out of time and runs out of room. Alfred Jethro will be credited with the sack but give credit to the coverage because Donnan had plenty of time. He sure did and he had a couple of open receivers on that one. Uh, Ricky Carter was just sitting right in the middle of the field and it Todd had just dumped it off. Watch uh, right down the middle of the field. You're going to see 23 Ricky Carter just waiting for the football. Now the linebackers are behind him. Zip that ball right there. You got the first down. Those linebackers are five or six yards in back of him. You can complete that pass for the first. There's little Ricky. And there's it, big, Ricky. big Ricky. Big <laughs> Ricky. Big Ricky, 6'2, 265. Donnan again with lots of time. Intercepted by Leon Jones. And he rumbled into the territory of the Thundering Herd at the 46 yard line. Team high fifth interception of the year for Jones. And he brought it back 22. Talk about laying in the weeds. This time Todd Dunn is trying to go back to Little Ricky and watch number 50 on the left side of the screen float back into his zone area and never takes his eyes off the football. He's reacting only to the football. He really didn't even look for the receiver, just went right for the ball. Beautiful interception and return. Todd Dunn and a look at what he was checking out downfield and he lets this ball go. He knows he's in trouble. And again, it appeared he had open receivers, Dan, and picked the wrong guy. The Penguins back on offense with a 17-0 lead when we come back. Sean McDonough with Dan Jiggetts and Jim Gray, our producer Lance Barrow, our director Kathy Barreto. Delighted to have you with us for the Division I AA football national championship game from Huntington, West Virginia. The Youngstown State Penguins looking for their second title in three years. Lead 17 to nothing with 428 left in the first half. And another bruising run for Tamron Smith as he took William King for a ride inside the 40. Down to the 38-yard line, about two yards short of a first down. 74 yards rushing now on 15 carries for Smith. You might be wondering what is the difference between Division I AA and 1A football. The biggest difference is the number of scholarships the schools are allowed to hand out. At this level, 65 full scholarships. Division 1A, 88 full rides for football. Smith popped short of a first down by Byron Turner. There's a late flag thrown into the pile. Billy Lyon was also in on the play. Holding against Youngstown State would have been third and less than a yard. Right now, Youngstown State has so much confidence in their run game, though. You know, it, it really doesn't make a difference. You get a little penalty, everybody says, well, okay, we'll just reload. Uh, and that's the way the whole game has been for them. As a result, they really dominated time of possession. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. You just feel so good as an offense when you know everything you tried, and, you know, everything's working. You're firing with everything you got, and the defense really can't do anything to stop you. They're tending to Byron Turner. player Byron Turner, who was in on the last stop. Second and 13. Run guard with a rare pass and now a scramble. And he got back near the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Billy Lyon, the freshman from Erlanger, Kentucky, made the tackle. 
Kentucky just across the river. This is the tri-state area of West Virginia, the river cities of Ashland, Kentucky, and Ironton, Ohio, all within about 15-mile radius, including Huntington. What a great job Marshall University has done these past two years in hosting a really one have. double-A championship game, and they'll host the game again next year. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of an advantage. Usually, you know, I was at a game uh, last week, the Division II championship in North Alabama. Distinct advantage for the home team in that one. This game would have been played here regardless of which two teams made it. This was the good fortune of Marshall. They happened to make it to their home field for the championship game. Run guard pressured and sacked by Rodney Garrett. Nine and a half sacks this year for Garrett. The senior from Sussex, Virginia. It's his first of the day. You know what I like about Garrett is he never gives up on a play. I mentioned it before when he uh, tipped the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Before, watch him come around the outside and continue to pursue the quarterback, Brumgard. Brumgard recognized the fact he's about to get mashed and goes to the turf. Jeff Wilkins. Another excellent punt. Martin let it bounce if Youngstown hurries. They could have downed it inside the five, but they weren't fast enough. Couldn't outrun the 53-yard punt by Jeff Wilkins. With the score 17-0 in favor of Youngstown State, we'll return on CBS after this. On your way back to West Virginia, I'm Greg Gumbel in our New York studio with a reminder. Coming up at halftime, Terry Bradshaw and I will have the latest sports news, including winter sports results, and we'll take a look at a quarterback who has good reason to feel at home with his coach. Their father and son and the Donnans are about to return to action as we send you back to the title game. Enjoy. And Greg, Youngstown State had its own father-son act. It was Jim Trussell who played for his father, Lee Trussell, back in 1972 at Baldwin Wallace College. So he told us yesterday that he knows just exactly what the Donnans are going through, and it's a very, very difficult situation, particularly for the person who is playing. The father, he seems to think, has an easier time because it is the son who has to take all the heat from the players when the dad does something wrong to one of the other guys on the team. <laughs> Sean? That's right. Coach Tressel said yesterday, it's not a problem when you're winning. That's right. I asked uh, Todd Don, I said, you know, do you go back in the locker room and talk with the guys when they're getting on your dad? He said, sure. He fires on them as well. <laughs> First and ten for Marshall. Starting at the Thundering Herd, 20, less than two minutes left in the half. All three timeouts at the disposal of the Thundering Herd. And Glenn Pedro took the swing pass out to the 27-yard line where he was tackled by Randy Smith. Andre Womack came up with a nice block along the sideline wide receiver number 80. Randy Smith on the stop. Block is run, so they go without a huddle. Donnan in trouble. And down for a loss. Back at the 26-yard line. Another sack for Andre Jethro, who came into today's game without a sack all year, and he's had two here in the first half, and a timeout has been called by Marshall. We'll be back in just a moment. A minute 22 left in the first half. Youngstown State leads 17 and nothing. Marshall just used its first timeout. Try to get something going here in the final minute and a half. Now they're looking at third and four, so a good chance if the herd is not successful, Youngstown State could use a timeout. Inside handoff. And nothing doing for Glenn Pedro. Jermaine Hopkins, the backup defensive end, made the play. You can see that Andre Mason trying to argue that there was a fumble on the play but the officials ruled that Pedro was down for a loss. Todd Dunn trying to go with the, the draw play there and kind of an interesting call. I'd prefer to go downfield on a situation like that because you can also you know kill the clock a little bit that burns up a lot of time off the clock In that situation if you get caught or even if you're successful on the play. And Youngstown State did indeed use a timeout with a minute 11. Yep. They stand to get the ball back in good field position with a chance to add to the 17 to nothing lead before halftime. They may get the ball back around their 45 or so, uh, Sean. In that case, you know, they're thinking uh, field goal, uh, certainly, and maybe even a touch. We're talking about Jim Tressel and his family history playing for his dad and now being a successful coach like his dad. Dr. Lee Tressel 
was a terrific coach at Baldwin Wallace. The late doctor won 155 games and lost only 52 in 23 years at that school in the Cleveland area. And Jim Tressel's brother, Dick, has been the head coach for a long time at Hamlin University in St. Paul, Minnesota. He's done an excellent job at Youngstown State, too. Lee and Jim Tressel, the first father and son combination to win national titles. Another problem on the punt for Marshall. And Cole Quit was able to get it away. Down at the 47-yard line. 29-yard punt without a return and time for Youngstown. A minute one remaining and two timeouts. Now is a situation where Youngstown's been so successful running the football, Sean, that maybe they go to a, uh, a few play-action passes to try to advance the ball uh, quickly uh, using the sideline. The good thing about play action is normally you're rolling out, so you're working towards that sideline. The NFL game that's underway, Chicago leads Denver three to nothing. Playoff implications for both of those teams. Mark Brungard, the quarterback. Jim Tressel says he has fought through. Youthful mistakes to become a better quarterback as the season has gone along. And now he's going to scramble. And he lowered his shoulder and bowled his way for the first down. Ran over William King. Ricky Carter was also in on the stop. That's a gain of 11, and they'll stop the clock to move the chains. That's the good news for Youngstown because you do stop the clock on that first down, and he just scrambles out of here very nicely. You see, he's got the linebackers dropping back, man coverage. There's plenty of room to run. Gets kind of tough there at the end. First down for the <laughs> Quarterbacks are not supposed to get hit like that, are they? William King says, yes, they are. Run guard throws short to Clark, incomplete. Shannon King had the coverage. We've seen Shannon King and William King all over the field here in the first half, and Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday that the NFL people are a little bit concerned about their size. Shannon King, 5'9", William King, 5'10", but they certainly have the speed to play at the next level, and there have you know, been some comparisons to Sam Mills. Sam Mills, uh, Sam has, uh, you know, been to a few Pro Bowls in his lifetime, and one of the things that uh, is always difficult to measure is just how hard a guy can play uh, in the speed with which they play. The speed makes up for a lot for the lack of size. Shannon King has 11 tackles in the first half. Second and 10, 40 seconds remaining. Clark through a big hole. And close to another first down at the 32. Roger Johnson and Melvin Cunningham combined on the tackle that saved another touchdown for Clark. You know you got the defense playing a little loose. The linebackers have dropped off the ball about five yards. Now you decide to run the football with Clark, and he's got all kinds of space up front. His offensive line did a tremendous job blocking on that play. And Youngstown gets the free stop of the clock for measurement. They're inches short at the 32-yard line with 34 seconds left in the half. the pass says Jim Donnan longtime assistant to Barry Switzer at Oklahoma before coming to Marshall he was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma from 85 through 89 and was on the staff when the Sooners won the national championship in 86 they had a couple of runs at it uh, while he was there too and you know if you're a Youngstown you got to feel pretty comfortable right now uh, you got Jeff Wilkins your kicker as a Walter Camp All-American to try to put it through the uprights if everything else should fail third and inches and they wind the clock as they reset the chain. Still two timeouts remaining for the Penguins. Smith, first down. Another tackle for Shannon King. And again, the clock stops, and it will be wound when they reset the chains. Marshall defense go for the strip now. Try to rip that ball away from the ball carrier and uh, prevent some more points from going up on the board. The clock runs. 17-0 Youngstown State. They're looking to add to that lead just before halftime. Run guard. Pressured by William King, who chased him out of bounds. Good decision by Brungard to go out and stop the clock. Football. 
I like the activity I see out of William King. You know, you wonder if guys can have the ability, maybe he can play strong safety or something like that uh, on the next level. Uh, certainly he's active enough, and he's got the foot speed to play in that position. In the National Football League, all you have to do is be a hitman back there, and he's certainly that. William told us yesterday he came very close to going to Youngstown State. He grew up in the Cleveland area before he moved to Charleston, West Virginia. Decided at the last minute to go to Marshall. Second and 11. He'll stay on the ground with Clark. And he is tripped up by William King. And Youngstown gets another timeout with eight seconds left in the half. One timeout remaining for Youngstown State. Coming up following today's game, it's the NFL today and then Dallas at the New York Jets. The Cowboys led by Emmett Smith. That's next on CBS. You watch the NFL quite a bit and work the games regularly. Dallas still the best team in the NFL or have they? You know, I think you get an argument for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They've, uh, you know, showed some signs, some chinks in the armor of late. Uh, there's really no dominant team other than the New York Giants. And boy, talking about a surprise there. What a job Dan Reeves and his staff have done out there with the Giants. He's got to be coach of the year. They've decided to go for a field goal now rather than risk a lengthy play that would have time expire here in the first half. So Wilkins comes on out of the hold up run guard. It'll be a 42 yard field goal. Jeff is three for six from between 40 and 49 yards this year. He has the breeze at his back. Distance should not be a problem. And covered by Brungard, the holder, at the 41-yard line on the final play of the half. Block looked like it came from over on the right side. There's a look at that block. And watch over on the right side. Penetration low. You get low, you... You take those uh, guards out and they come right up over the top. It looked like Rodney Garrett, number 88, was the guy that got his hand on it. That's the end of the first half. A half dominated by Youngstown State. The score, 17 to nothing in favor of the Penguins. Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw will be along with the halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Championships is sponsored by Oldsmobile. The United States Marine Corps. You've got to be tough to play. You've got to be smart to win. And by MasterCard. It's more than a credit card. It's smart money. Hello, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw at halftime of the NCAA Division I AA Championship. Our score in Huntington, West Virginia, the Fighting Penguins of Youngstown State leading Marshall by a score of 17 to nothing. And a ground game has been going pretty well in the first half for Youngstown State. Darnell Clark. Look at this move. This guy is high on the pros list. This guy's got a lot of moves, Greg, a lot of quickness. Good job. Cuts in, cuts out. All the way to the end zone. Third straight year these two teams have met for this championship. Marshall won it last year. Youngstown State the year before. 17-0. The Penguins lead it today. NFL action at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Bears and the Denver Broncos are tied at three up. Fumbles have led to uh, field goals for each side, and they are late in the second quarter. It's a 3-3 tie. Coming up next, we will take you across the river to the Meadowlands, where the Jets will host the Cowboys, and Dallas can clinch a playoff spot with a win. And for the Jets, this game is tantamount to a playoff game. It all begins with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern time. Well, there are only 56 days remaining until the 17th Olympic Winter Games in Lillehammer, Norway. This week in Moscow, Vice President Al Gore cheered on Team USA. How are you? Fine. Jeff Lazaro. you get me a job after the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> There's a good question. For now, there is still some business to finish in Lillehammer just two months from now. 
Speaking of Team USA, they continued on their roll, beating Norway today by a score of 4-3. to three. And Todd Marchand out of Williamsville, New York, was the leader in that game. He had a goal and three assists. Figure skating competition. The German championship saw the return of Katarina Witt. Take a look at some of the activity from her long program as she begins the road back. Greg, double toe loop, sow cow, sip spin. The 1984 and 1988 Olympic gold medalists finished second in the competition, and these three German women will compete in January's European Championships, and the top two finishers will go on to Lillehammer. World Cup alpine skiing men's competition in Italy. Patrick Ortlieb, the 92 oh. Olympic downhill gold medalist, was the winner. His first World Cup win, Americans A.J. Kitt, Tommy Moe, and Jeff Olson finished 11th, 16th, and 17th, respectively. In women's alpine skiing in Austria, Austrians took number one and two positions. Anya Haas leading the way there. Peekaboo Street of the United States was 16th, and Hilary Lind was 19th. And in World Cup Luge, the German doubles team of uh, Stefan Kraus and Jan Berendt, the defending Olympic and world champions, were the winners in that. When we come back, the story behind the Donnans, Marshall's father and son, Coach and quarterback, one two punch. Our halftime score from Huntington, West Virginia, Youngstown State leading Marshall in this championship game. 17 to nothing. The winner will be crowned the NCAA Division I AA champion. Many fathers dream of someday coaching their sons, and many sons dream of someday winning a national championship. For Marshall's Donnan family, both dreams have come true, but not without a price. You're proud as the coach first, but also the father, just to see your son out there competing and, and thinking back to uh, all the times where, as he was growing up, uh, how many times you talked about and visualized, hoping that this would be a situation that he could experience. Here's the snap. Donnan steps up. Side steps right, going to throw the ball into the end zone for Martin. Touchdown, Marshall! What a great throw! I think it's kind of a special situation where they can, a father and son team can work together towards a certain goal, and I think it says a lot about our relationship and our team. The Donnans might take pride in their championship partnership, but their road to glory was paved with an agonizing decision. With Todd still in high school, Jim received the job offer of his lifetime, head coach at Marshall. While Todd and his mother Mary decided to remain in Oklahoma, Jim journeyed to West Virginia to be the hard-driving shepherd of the thundering herd. It was a supreme sacrifice, there's no question about it, and uh, it was a difficult decision, but Todd helped me out in it as much as anybody because of the night that we decided on it. He told me I'd been waiting all my life and that he could handle it, and he, the best thing for me to do was take the job. thought about it a couple times when he was gone that I never really paid much attention to him when he was around as far as, you know, telling him I love him or stuff like that. And, uh, I kind of had that uh, kind of a macho attitude of a kid growing up and you know, didn't really show my feelings much toward him. And uh, I think once he was gone, I kind of really realized uh, you know, how much I relied on him and how much I missed him. Seventeen months later, after Todd graduated high school, the family joined Jim in Huntington. And the sacrifices this father and son made finally paid off. Uh, uh, beyond description from the pride standpoint, just the fact that, that uh, there's your own flesh and blood out there running your club, it's just, uh, it's just great. A lot of people have always asked me, well, how hard is it to play for your dad? I'm sure that's, that's really tough, but for me, it's, it's been a lot easier. Um, for the communication that we have has been really good, and you kind of wonder how many father and son teams around the nation uh, have a championship ring between them, uh, let alone two, which we're shooting for this weekend. Would you like to have played for your dad? I would, have, I, I would have loved to have my dad as a coach. I could think nothing that would have made me any happier. Terry and I will see you back here at 3.30 Eastern time for the NFL today. Up next, we'll send you back out to Sean and Dan as the quest for the NCAA Division I AA crown continues here on CBS.
Boy, I'll say, you know, last year at halftime, you could have fired a cannon off in here and not hit anybody because we were in the bottom end of a similar score instead of being ahead 17-0. Two things people are talking about all afternoon out here is what a difference this year's game is over last year's game and what a, a lot of spirit out here, too. The other thing people are talking about is what's going to happen to Coach Jim Tressel. The rumors were flying around today that perhaps Coach Tressel was headed to Cincinnati. The latest reports we're seeing now indicate that probably won't happen. That's right. Uh, Cincinnati's called a press conference this afternoon. Probably going to name a Notre Dame assistant coach. As Which is good coach. news for us because these guys want Tressel to stay, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got some real fan excitement out here. So hope you're watching and hope you're enjoying the game. It's back to CBS now. Go ahead, guys. All right. CBS now. Go ahead, guys. Thank you, Jim. Dan, what does Coach Donnan have to do to change the plot in the second half? Well, one of the things you have to do is reverse the trend. Youngtown State is averaging 8.3 yards on first down. Marshall, 1.9. That's got to switch around. We're set for the second half kickoff here at Marshall University Stadium. The home standing thundering herd. With a lot of work to do in the second half if they are to win their second consecutive national title. The herd will get it first. Tim Martin back to receive the kickoff from Jeff Wilkins. Youngstown State, if you're just joining us, scored on the second play from scrimmage. A 51-yard touchdown run by Darnell Clark. After Marshall's first possession, they had a problem on a punt by Travis Colquitt. He realized that his kick was probably going to be blocked by Alfred Hill. So he kept the ball, and Hill tackled him at the six-yard line. Tamron Smith punched it in from six yards out. Make it 14 to nothing with the extra point, and then Jeff Wilkins kicked a 19-yard field goal. And then you ask if uh, there's anything that, you know, uh, Marshall has to build on. Well, yeah, the blocked field goal right at the end that Youngstown was attempting. That's something positive you take into the locker room with you just before the half. Two years ago, Youngstown trailed by 11 in the fourth quarter. Scored 19 unanswered points to take the title away from Marshall. Last year, Jim Donnan's team, the Thundering Herd of Marshall, at 28 to nothing in the second half. Youngstown came back to tie it in 28 all before Willie Merrick won it for the last second field goal. And it remains to be seen if we'll have our third comeback in as many years in the 1AA championship game. The second half is underway. And another good kickoff by Wilkins. Marshall begins at the 20. Let's check out the statistics from the first half. You see the domination by Youngstown State on the uh, first down area. Also rushing yards. They've been pounding the football at Marshall's defense. And uh, the only place where they're losing a little bit is in the passing yards. They really haven't had the pass uh, so far in this ball game. They've uh, been marshalling their forces on the ground. As a result, uh, they have a time of possession advantage. 18 minutes, 44 seconds to 11-16. Donnan completed 50% of his passes in the first half. And they pitch it to Chris Parker. He couldn't get on track in the first half, and nothing special about his first carry of the second half. A gain of two to the 22. David Birch made the tackle. That's seven carries for seven yards for Chris Parker. Mentioned the fact that uh, we talked about Youngstown State's offensive line, uh, you know, reestablishing the line of scrimmage. That's one thing that the Marshall offensive front has not been able to uh, to affect so far in this ball game. As a result, they've had uh, you know Chris Parks had a difficult time running the ball. He sees averaging one yard per rush. I did the math on that one pretty fast. Yes, you did. It? Very impressive, even for a Harvard guy. <laughs> on second and eight, Donnan looks deep and throws. Caught. Ricky Carter. With a first down, out at the 36-yard line, belted down by Reggie Brown. It's a gain of 14. Ricky Carter gets a nice separation when he started his move across the field, and that allowed Todd Dunn to, to find him. Now, Todd rolls out to his right, but he's going to throw back to the left side. You see there the separation I was talking about between the linebackers and those deep backs. Another peek at the play action. Nice little hand fake there, slide of hand. Holds that defense up for just a moment. Three catches for 32 yards for Ricky Carter. Glenn Pedro out 
to the 44. The senior from Staten Island, New York, tackled by Reggie Lee. You look at the first half possessions for Marshall, you get some idea of what we're talking about in terms of the three and out and just the difficult situations for them not running the football successfully and certainly not passing it successfully. Both turnovers came in Youngstown State territory. Pedro gained eight on first down, second and two. Parker back in the game, has the first down in the Penguin territory. Actually, they're going to spot his knee down short of the 50-yard line, but still good for a first down. Paul Kahn, the tackler. Now, that's what I'm talking about when you get that offensive line popping off a little bit. Now you start to see some of those defensive linemen getting scooched back off of that line of scrimmage. You see the line of scrimmage right there. Watch them all moving back. The little swim techniques are pushing them backwards, and that's what you have to do in that offensive front if you want to be successful. It's one of the things that defensive coordinator John Haycock told us yesterday Youngstown would play way off the line of scrimmage because Marshall is a zone blocking team and you can see how far off the line that defensive front is. Donna out to Tim Martin. He is inbounds the clock runs. He spotted down at the 45 a gain of five on first down Reggie Brown again made the tackle. The other thing you have to like about this drive so far is the fact they're using the whole field and using all of their people. Uh, you've got a lot of tools out there that something Todd doesn't need to use every tool that he's got in his box right now. You know, Coach Donnan said to Jim Gray, maybe it's going to be a reversal of the script where we're the ones who come back in the second half. And you have to think that the players on both sides, they know what's happened the last two oh, years. Yeah. They know that the comebacks are a possibility, particularly if Marshall continues to chew up yardage like this. Parker inside the 40. Sometimes we mentioned the fact that it was unusual that uh, Youngstown scored so many points in the first quarter. Here's the, the uh, series. For the last couple of years, Youngstown and Marshall didn't score in the first uh, quarter. Look at that third quarter. Marshall put up 31 points in the previous two ball games, championship games between these two teams. And Youngstown was on the fourth quarter in the last two championship games. Marshall's first six drives of the game. They gained 42 yards. They gained 42 on this drive. Looking for more. Incomplete. Carter was there and got fingers on it, but couldn't squeeze it. Rookie Carter ran away from double coverage that time. He got into coverage was Andre Mason, the strong safety. You see him back there playing that deep uh, half of the field and almost gets his hands on it. And that's what pushes it out of Carter's hands. That should have been caught. Todd Donna thought he had money on that one. Second and ten, eighth play of the drive, the opening drive of the second half. Twelve minutes left in the third quarter. Youngstown State leads 17 to nothing. They keep it on the ground with Pedro. He got very little. Advanced to the 36 for a gain of two before Jim Jones. Led the defensive surge, number 97, reserve defensive tackle, freshman from New Kensington, Ohio. We mentioned they've already surpassed their output in total yardage from the first half with this one drive in the third quarter. Third down and eight. The herd two of seven in the first half on third down. Donnan, his knee did not touch the ground. He goes down at the 34-yard line, still six yards short of a first down. It's a good move. It's just like if you're a tennis player and you slide on that clay. Todd Donnan is a heck of a tennis player, and he uses that experience to his advantage here. Puts the arm down and pops back up. What do you say he was fourth in the state of Oklahoma in tennis? As a senior in high school. Yeah, a championship tennis player. Fourth rated singles player in the entire state. So tennis was actually his best sport, but he never considered playing it in college because football is his favorite sport. His dad was a championship player as well. They're going for it on fourth and seven. And they have to hurry to get the playoff. They just did. Pedro has a lot of ground to cover and didn't get there. He was stopped four yards short of a first down by Reggie Brown. Thank you. 
Reggie made an excellent play because uh, you know what? You want to go downfield in that situation. You don't want to swing it out to the backs because there's tight coverage on the perimeter. Roger Todd is looking downfield and just makes the decision right now. He saw a receiver break down there further downfield, and he probably had an opportunity to go deep had he been a little bit more patient. Mm -hmm. He certainly had more time before he had to dump it off. So Jim Trestle's Penguins take over. On offense for the first time in the second half. 10.30 left in the third quarter. 17-0 Youngstown State. Cameron Smith bounced off the pile. And goes down at the 38. Shannon Morrison, the strong safety, tripped him up. Tamron Smith that time ran over his offensive guard, Drew Gerber. Better be careful. Gerber's that 300 pounder with uh, all kinds of strength and a 37 inch vertical jump. Although linemen don't use a vertical jump very often, do they? No. <laughs> Surprised they even bother to measure. That's right. <laughs> they measure it on the Richter scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second and five. They stay with Smith. That's a good idea. Cameron Smith tripped up by Shannon King, but it's another first down for Youngstown State. Ten yards on the game for Tamron Smith. Marshall defensively has to go back to what was successful for them in the first half, Sean. Uh, the penetration, you know, keep the defensive line moving. Tim Trestle wanted a timeout before they ran the play. Undoubtedly, he was satisfied with the result of the play. Well, after that happens, you go, yeah, that's what I was going to call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe just signaling some sort of team formation. <laughs> Over five yards per rush. Marshall less than half a yard per running play. Smith has 94 yards now in 18 carries. First and 10, just short of midfield. Darnell Clark scored the first touchdown of the game. He scores into Marshall territory before Rodney Garrett took him down. Both Clark and Smith rushed for 1,000 yards last year as well as this year. And Tamron Smith and Leo Hawkins each had over 1,000 yards in 1991. So this is the third straight year in which Youngstown State has had two 1,000-yard rushes. See Clark's numbers on the day. Fabulous. He has 76, including the 51-yard touchdown run on the second play of the game. Smith has 94 yards rushing, second and seven, nearly midway through the third quarter. Smith close to another first down, about a yard short at the 43. Shannon King and Donahue Stevenson tripped him up. Cameron compares himself to Barry Fox, who said more of a power back than a speed back when we asked him to evaluate himself. He grew up idolizing Eric Dickerson. We asked him yesterday how many times he, he, he collects contracts. Carry the ball. He said about 100. And we said, well, realistically, how many times he carry the ball? He said probably at least 50. There you go. Well, you know, when you think back, Chris Parker carried the ball 41 times for Marshall mm -hmm. last week. Maybe that's the reason why he's not quite as effective today. Third and two. Smith. Very close to a first down. Shannon King has had an enormous game on defense for Marshall. And he might have stopped Smith just short of the first down. Donahue Stevenson came into the play to finish off Smith. I think it was Byron Turner who really upset everything there, number 53. Watch him flash across the screen. That takes out the bullet guard. Uh, watch right there. You see him, number 53, takes out the guard. That takes out all the interference. So those linebackers on the other side can make the play. Officially 15 tackles already for Shannon King who gained over 3,600 yards as a running back here in Huntington in high school at Huntington High. And on fourth and less than a yard, Jeff Wilkins comes on to punt to Tim Martin. Very high kick, a little bit too deep for the coverage, and Marshall will get it at the 20, a 43-yard punt. We'll return to the 1AA championship game after this on CBS. Sean McDonough with Dan Jiggetts and Jim Gray at the Division I AA National Championship game. On first down for Marshall, Glenn Pedro carried and David Birch made the stop. After a gain of four, coaches give Pedro a lot of credit. He was written up all summers. The guy who was going to be the big ball carrier this year for Marshall. 
coming back for his senior year. But then when Parker emerged early in the year, Pedro came more of the blocking back. As a matter of fact, carried only four times last week in the semifinal win over Troy State. But Pedro has never complained. As a matter of fact, he refuses to let the coaches take him off the special teams. He likes covering kicks. Don in complete. For a first down out to the 41, Will Brown made the play, a gain of 17. This time, Todd Dunn has some patience in the pocket, and that's why the deep pass is opening up for him. You see the routes up underneath, but he decides to go down field about 50 to 20 yards, and he finds his receiver wide open on that sideline. Just be patient in the pocket, uh, and those passes, the deep passes, will develop for you. Will Brown, a senior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He has three catches today. Pedro with some running room. He's close to another first down into Youngstown State territory. Looks to be about a half yard shy of the first down. Randy Smith tripped him up with help from Reggie Lee. Now watch Aaron Ferguson, number 59 on this play. He's going to be leading out. He's the right guard. Watch him lead out. He doesn't find anybody to hit. There's somebody chasing him. And every now and then when you get out there, coaches always tell you, hey, turn around and find somebody to hit. Get down on the ground. Don't look good. Get down on the ground. Juan Pedro's the second all-time leading rusher in Marshall history behind only Ron Darby. And this is Parker who drives ahead for the first down. And a few more to the 45. Reggie Lee credited with the tackle. You raise the point that's a good one, Dan. 41 carries last week against Troy State for Parker, mm -hmm. who's already been playing with a loose, a loose a knee ligament and a bad ankle, and you wonder if all the pounding has finally taken its toll. Yeah, particularly, you know, he's been on the AstroTurf uh, here at the Marshall Stadium for that whole time, all through the playoffs, and, and that makes it even more difficult on you. And you get a slippery, wet day like we have today, and uh, you have to be very careful. But he's uh, played very tough with the, the uh, injured ligament. Stretch, he said. 17-0, Youngstown State. 5-15 left in the third quarter. On target again is Donnan. To Will Brown for another first down at the 32. That's a gain of 14. Reggie Brown locked Will Brown out of bounds, and Brown trying to excite the crowd of 30,000 that has had little to cheer today. It's almost like a comeback that they're running over to the sideline, and it's wide open because uh, the, the receivers, the outside receivers, are getting a nice cushion. On its first possession of the half, Marshall had an impressive drive that stalled in just about this territory. Now they have it first and 10 of the Youngstown 32. Parker in his room. Another first down. And out of bounds at the 18. Another tackle for Reggie Brown. And another block along the sideline for Will Brown, the wide receiver. You wonder how sometimes whether or not wide receivers have to get into the act as well. Yeah, you need the offensive line blocking, no question. But watch the wide receiver blocking down here. Number five, Will Brown's going to take his man out. You see him going down right there. He would have stopped the ball carrier Parker at least four or five yards earlier. That's the longest running play for Marshall today, a gain of 13. First and 10 at the 18 yard line. 507 left in the third quarter. Parker. Drove down inside the 15. Reggie Brown has been in on almost every play here in the third quarter for Youngstown State, the junior from Cleveland, Ohio, wearing number seven. Now, I want to show you something here. Watch now, right here. Watch this line of scrimmage get removed. See that right there? Now, they're going to get scooted back about three or four yards. That's what I'm talking about, that offensive line snapping off the football, removing the defense from the line of scrimmage, and leaving room for your running back to run. Find that crease and hit it up in there. Eighth play of this drive upcoming. Sharp contrast to the first half. Marshall has controlled the play here in the third quarter, but still nothing on the board for the thundering herd. Parker. Out of bounds at the 12. Trying to follow the lead block of Glenn Pedro. Leon Jones knocked Chris Parker out of bounds. I think they got our sound guy, too, the uh, parabolic mic down there. Gee, that thunk. They thunk it. <laughs> Parker runs with a style that would suggest that he weighs a lot more than he does. He's only about 180 pounds. And he'll put his head down and run over people. He really had to work through some tragedies in his life. Uh, he was involved in a terrible car accident, which a couple of people uh, lost their lives, and he had to come back from that. And uh, so a young man has gone through a lot, but come out the other side, and uh, all the better for it. Big play in the game right here. 
third down, nearly four yards to go for Marshall first down. They stay on the ground. And Parker didn't come close. Still two yards short. Tim Donnan has to decide whether to go for the field goal or try to get more than that. They've had some interesting play calls on some third down situations when they run plays that wouldn't seem to be designed to get as many yards as they needed to get. Right, you know, and sometimes at the risk of trying to be crafty, uh, you end up uh, outsmarting yourself. And uh, certainly in areas like this, you know, you want to be successful. You want to go down and go downfield and make sure that you have, you know, you're giving yourself all the opportunity you can to be successful and get the first down of the test. David Merrick, the junior from Worthington, Ohio, will try a 27-yard field goal. Chad O'Shea, the backup quarterback, is the holder. And Merrick just did sneak it through, just inside the right upright. So the thundering herd is on the board. And Jim Tressel was hoping it was wide right, but it was not. 17 to 3. We'll be back in just a moment. Marshall is on the board on the field goal by David Merrick. He was the field goal kicker last year for Marshall for the entire year until the championship game. After missing a couple of practices, after sleeping through them, he was suspended for that violation of team rules by Coach Donnan. And he had to watch the championship game. His brother Willie came off the soccer team to kick the game-winning field goal in the final seconds last year to give Marshall the national championship. Kickoff return out to the 36-yard line. Let's look back at last year's dramatic finish. For the national championship, Willie Merrick from 22 yards. Merrick, yes! <laughs> Can you believe it? Jim Nance with the call. Willie Merrick, the older brother of David, not able to be here today because he's now playing professional soccer for the Buffalo Blizzard. And David Merrick was there to watch the kick. Willie been the backup field goal kicker all year long in addition to starring on the Marshall soccer team but had not attempted a field goal in a college game before that field goal. Darnell Clark close to a first down for Youngstown. He's about a yard and a half shy of it at the 45-yard line. Shannon Morrison tackled him. Morrison. 3.07, and the clock is running, remaining in the third quarter. It's been a frustrating day for Chris Parker. Tamron Smith is on the bench. Apparently, he's not feeling well at the moment. Second, a long one for Mark Brungard. And the Youngstown State Penguins. Clark bounced off the stick of Shannon King and picked up the first down beyond the 47. And we'll get Jim Gray on the scene and find out what's wrong with Tamron Smith. Let's have to get those turbos tuned up. He'll be ready to roll. Jim Tressel spent time as an assistant coach at Ohio State under Earl Bruce, Syracuse under Dick McPherson, at Miami University in Akron before becoming the head coach at Youngstown State. The option play, flag thrown in the middle of the field as Brungard goes down for a one-yard loss. That'll be a face mask penalty, I think. Yep, holding. It was thrown by the referee, Steve Newman, right in the middle of the field. The line of scrimmage. Coach Donnan has a decision to make because the play lost yardage. He might be content to take the play for second down, but he's going to take the penalty. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, replay first down. And let's get that report on Tamron Smith from Jim Gray. Well, Sean, Tamron Smith went over to the bench. He was just a little bit shaken up. He was hit on the blind side. We talked to the trainers. He said he just got his bell rung, didn't really know where he is. He's up, he's up now and is expected to return to the game. Sean? 
So they tuned up the turbos and polished the windshield. <laughs> and he appears ready to return but at the moment. Running game in the capable hands and feet of Darnell Clark. First and 20. Back at the 37 yard line. They give it to Clark. Play strung out nicely by Hamilton. And he made the stop. At the line of scrimmage, Chris Hamilton, number 99, a junior from Charleston, West Virginia. And he boxed the play. That's what you ask those outside guys to do. Watch them as they try to, Youngstown tries to head out on the perimeter. You see him boxing the play, shutting it down from the outside, and that makes uh, Clark reverse feel, and there's a thundering herd waiting for him. <laughs> Led by Hamilton, who's a very highly recruited player, rated by Street and Smiths as one of the top 100 high school recruits when he was coming out of Charleston, West Virginia, and decided to go to Marshall. He's got great size, 6'5", worth about 245 or so. Time becoming a factor to approach the final minute of the third quarter. 17-3, Youngstown. Backward pass complete to Clark, and he is sent flying well short of the first down at the 43-yard line. Shannon Morrison sent Clark airborne. This ball was almost picked off and run back the other way. You want to know how lucky Mark Grungard is? Watch as he flicks this ball out here. That is uh, Garrett out there, number 88. He's a step ahead. He picks it off and runs it the distance, probably. Third and 14. The Penguins, five out of ten on third down today. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Rungard faced with a blitz. Has a man wide open. Don Whistler. The leading receiver for the Penguins coming in with his first catch of the day and a huge one all the way down to the 33 of Marshall, a 24-yard game. Roger Johnson, the free safety, looked like the guy who gave up on this play a little bit. You see him over in the right corner of your screen. Number 26, he does not stay with the receiver. He thinks he has a breakdown to come back for the quarterback, Rungard, because he looks like he's in a, a lot of trouble. But you got to stay with those receivers downfield because uh, Brungard has the ability to scramble out of it and let it loose. It's Whistler at 31 catches coming in to lead the Penguins. He had five catches in the championship game last year. That's his first catch That's today. And it might be the biggest play of the game to this point. Marshall had a chance to get the ball back with momentum. Momentum still on the side now, the Penguins. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Youngstown State 17 and Marshall 3. Youngstown State has the ball in a 14-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter. Here's Jim Gray. All right, Sean, thank you very much. CBS Sports has learned that Rick Minter, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame University, will be leaving that position at 4 o'clock Eastern time, and he will be named the new head coach of the University of Cincinnati. Now, Minter has spent the past two years at Notre Dame. Before that, seven years at Ball State as an assistant coach. He's 39 years old from Nash, Texas, and he'll be named the new head coach at the University of Cincinnati. Sean? And undoubtedly, that is a great relief to the folks yeah, watching in absolutely. Youngstown, Ohio, who are delighted that that means Jim Tressel won't be going to Cincinnati, as we had speculated in the first half when the report came that they had a press conference in Cincinnati at 4 o'clock and the coach was going to be there. That kind of ruled out Jim Tressel. That's right. I visited with Rick Mitter a couple of weeks ago on my uh, radio show back in Chicago and he did an outstanding job in the Florida State game, and that's when everybody really started talking about it. First down, Purdue thrown for a loss by William King. Another young coach, by the way. He's uh, 39 years old. Good defensive stop here by the Marshall defense. See uh, King coming, flashing through. William King makes the stop. Said that the linebackers have to be aggressive and pursue down the line of scrimmage. The defensive line penetrate. Uh, wreak havoc with that uh, offensive front of Youngstown. If you don't, they'll mash you. Still no Tamron Smith in the lineup for Youngstown State. Opening minute of the fourth quarter, the Penguins lead 17 to three. On second and 14, back to the option. Brungard sandwiched and tackled after a gain of one. Roger Johnson, the free safety number 26, made the play with help from William King. You mentioned that William King was not here last year for most of the second half, knocked unconscious. 
early in the third quarter, taken to a nearby hospital, said one of the things that he remembers vividly about that experience last year, a fan watching the game on TV right. went to the hospital with a portable radio so that William could listen to the game as the doctors were x-raying him and examining him. He still doesn't know who that fan was. Yeah, he's been searching for the guy ever since then, I guess. And never found out who it was. Tamron Smith is back into the game for Youngstown on third and 13. Run guard throws caught very close to a first down. It appears with the spot that Whistler has another huge third down catch. And there will be some arguing on this one because you want to see where the forward progress was. And let's take a look here. He had to get down to about the uh, 24 yard line. Tough to tell from that angle. He did get the first down. They marked the catch at the 22, much to the chagrin of Jim Donnan. Run guard is uh, now 4-4 four four in uh, passing conversions for first downs of, of third down. It's not a bad little number to take with you. And Zwissler, the two recent catches on third and long. 13-10 left of the third quarter. Flag thrown in the middle of the field. Looks like Clark is going to be bottled up, and he managed to squeeze through. We're about eight yards. We'll check out the flag. Flag also thrown at the end of the play. That was for the extra stuff going on uh, about ten yards downfield. That one of the participants, number six of Riddles. Jim Tressel coaches the quarterback himself. And has played a large part in the improvement of Mark Brungard as the year has gone along. The officials out of the Gateway Conference. And Steve Newman has finally sorted it out. Unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams after the play and the holding call against Youngstown during the play. Here's a look at the holding call up at the top of your screen. You see number 83. They're holding. That is uh, John Kanata. And watch him. He's got penalty. a little gripper on in there in the inside. The That's where It'll the flag comes down. in. The dead ball. The other stuff you see downfield a little bit. Penalties occurred at the same time offset and will not be penalized. See right there at the end of it. And is uh, equal on both sides, a little pushing and shoving. Number six for Youngstown Trent uh, Boykin. is uh, Trent Boykin. 5'5", 151 pounds. You wouldn't think he'd be mixing it up, would you? No. <laughs> no, indeed. Only one penalty against Marshall. That's a little consolation to Coach Donnan at the moment. And time is running out. Under 13 minutes remaining. 17-3 Youngstown State. This is the ninth play of the Penguin Drive. And it's first and 20. Back at the 32. Cameron Smith. Got one and that's all. Shannon King and Rodney Garrett in on the play. You see William King force the issue though. See that's what I mean about the linebackers getting across and disrupting the flow of the play. Uh, that time William King was the guy that gets in there and uh, redirects the running game a little bit. And all of a sudden you know you, you can't be successful up front. The timing is way off. I'd be wondering about the uniform numbers. William King, number three. Shannon King, number 31. Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator, told us that they recruited those guys as running backs mm -hmm. in high school. Those are the numbers they wore. They wanted to continue wearing them in Marshall, so that's why they're three and 31, respectively. When they play like that, they can wear anything they want. Second and 18. Smith into the pile for very little. Shannon King, William King, Chris Hamilton, all in on the play. Nineteen tackles now for Shannon King. In his third year as a starter, senior from Huntington, West Virginia. Third and eighteen. Aren't gaining much, but they are killing the clock. 11 13, time is running. Run guard, 
has come up on a couple of third downs lately with completions. Now trying to get it on the run. He stopped short of the first down by about six yards. And on a skirmish after the play. And you can't do anything foolish if you're on the defense down there. And that's uh, Joe Cherico. Joe Cherico is standing there chirping a little bit. And you just get out of there. Because the worst thing you can do is get a penalty and advance the ball a little bit further. Mark Ringard decides that he uh, can't find a receiver downfield. Makes a nice run here. But at the end, maybe you want your quarterback to give it a little hook slide instead of going in head up and getting pounded. One benefit out of all this for Youngstown State is during the entire skirmish and still now the clock never stopped. Exactly. And they're just now winding the play clock. So Youngstown benefited in terms of time. Jeff Wilkins, 34-yard try out of Brungard's hold. And it's no good. Wide left. Wilkins can't believe it. So it's still 17 to 3. We'll return to Huntington after this message from your local station. You're watching the Division One AA football championship game on CBS. Thank you. Jim Campbell and Jim Evans for post-game highlights and interviews on TV 27. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Championships is sponsored by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Vicks NyQuil liquid caps, part of the Vicks family of products. And by Aetna, a policy to do more. Still 17-3 Youngstown State as this field goal was ruled wide left. Apparently the official slotted hooked left before it went by the upright. You'll see the official stand right under the uprights and look straight up in the air as the ball goes over just to make sure that they are correct on their call. Good news on that drive for Youngstown State. They killed 8 minutes and 21 seconds with the 12 plays, even though they came up empty on the scoreboard. Leon Jones, the tackle on the pass to Parker. He picked up only three. Time running out on Marshall. Under 10 minutes remaining now at 9.55 and it's 17-3 Youngstown State. It's uh, time for Marshall, I think, uh, you know, to start thinking a bit about how to use the clock in terms of uh, even, uh, you know, with nine minutes or so left to go in the game, to, you know, pass the ball judiciously, get out of bounds whenever you can uh, with the run game as well. Uh, Donnan's been much more accurate here in the second half. He has plenty of time and throws. Good catch. By Will Brown, he's battling for an extra yard or two, but the whistle has stopped the play. 19 yards on the game. Here's another situation where uh, Will Brown gets loose down and again fighting a zone defense most of the time. Uh, here's a situation though, where he could have gone out of bounds. I talked about stopping the clock. Yes, it does stop uh, when uh, you move the sticks, but right there, spin outside, get out of bounds. In that case, you're not getting any more yardage by turning inside. And they've reset the chains and the clock is running. And here's Todd Donnan still looking over the right. sideline for the play. They're exactly. losing valuable time. They've done a terrible job here getting the play in. And finally, they have to burn a timeout. The fans boo, and you can understand why. You rely on your receivers, so, you know, yeah, you want them to catch the football, but also do the smart thing once you catch it. Roll out of bounds and stop the clock from ticking. 9.09 remaining. We'll be back on CBS right after this. Sean McDonough with Dan Jiggetts and Jim Gray in Huntington, West Virginia for the Division I AA National Championship game. Youngstown State has led from the opening seconds. And they're up 17-3 with 9.09 remaining. And Marshall just had to waste a timeout as they couldn't get the play straight. Trying to get it in from the sideline. Todd Donnan visited with his father, Jim. And now they're ready to go. First and 10 at their own 43. Down and on the run, complete to Ricky Carter. He's down at the 42 of the Penguins, tackled by Lester Weaver, gain of 15, and all of a sudden, Don is hit on seven straight passes. He's 15 of 22 for the game. A lot of times what you'll see in that offense is they'll get two plays. If the first one's successful, you know you're going to go right away to the second play. That was already called in the huddle. That way you save yourself precious uh, seconds. And this time they're out of the huddle much more quickly. 8.50 remaining. Rolling left this time, Donna too high. 
looking for Will Brown along the sideline. That's the idea, though, working that sideline. If you can hit that pass and get it out of bounds, uh, again, you're saving yourself a lot of time. Broncos leading the Bears right now 13 to 3 in the fourth. One of the points Chris Selfo, the offensive coordinator of Marshall, made yesterday is that the defensive backs of Youngstown State do not give up the big play. Even right. when it isn't an obvious situation like this, protecting a big lead, in the course of a game, they'll play a little bit soft, but they make you dink it down the field. That's right, because they're back in a deep zone most of the time. And Blitz. Oh, get behind them. Donnan struggled to stay on his feet. Now he's running for a first down. 13 yards down to the 29 yard line Todd Donnan he can run he didn't run much during the regular season because they're not very well equipped at backup quarterback but here in the playoffs they've let him run wild a bit more often and he's uh, he's guy that makes the decision very quickly so he's, uh, he's under a little bit of pressure Birch got in there on him and rolled up underneath him but he took off made a nice little run out of it just didn't have that burst to get out of there and uh, get to the sideline. Reverse. Martin sneaks inside. Flag thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like there's going to be a blocking penalty against Trevor Thomas. His man got inside of him and he couldn't see any other way around it, so he just decided to plop him down to the ground. Problem is, he was behind his man. Holding is the call against Marshall. Flag was thrown right at the feet of number 63, Trevor Thomas. And it's from the spot of the foul, and that was about five yards behind the line. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. You're running that reverse back into the uh, short side of the field, and that's what makes it tough for, for the guys up front, Sean. If you're running back to, you know, to that uh, sideline, I see right here there's not much room to operate outside, so he's in a bad position right away. He's trying to block Birch. Birch is inside of him. Walk off back to the 44, first and 24. Trevor Thomas. An outstanding player, three-year starter. Came to Marshall to walk on. And now they're starting to unravel. That was McCarty that did the meltdown there, Kevin McCarty. The holding call was just the second penalty today against Marshall. This will be the third as McCarty, the 50-year senior from Van, West Virginia. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's so hard when you try to sit in there and you're trying to make sure you get back and protect your quarterback and uh, that count is delayed just a bit. Got to get a little jump on the defense. First and 29. They're stuck in reverse now. Under eight minutes remaining. Donnan, four-man rush, has a receiver. And a good play by Brown. He got out of bounds, although he was frustrated that he couldn't pick up more yards. He got 15. Smart move there by Will Brown to, to get outside and then get it out to save himself some time. See all the players over looking towards that sideline, making sure that uh, get the right people in there, and also they get the play early. Second down, 14 yards to go. Second 14. At the 33-yard line. Donnan hit as he threw, and it is incomplete. Flag throw. Intended for Martin, the coverage from Andre Mason. And the flag was thrown in the secondary where you'd expect the interference call as they collided at the eight-yard line. You were just mentioning a couple of moments ago how uh, the uh, Penguins don't let you get deep on them. And uh, indeed, this time, uh, Mason did not. But watch him come back over the top of Martin's back to try to reach in and make the play. He was there just a tad too early. And as a result, it's a 15-yard penalty. Another peek at it. You can see there's no question he gets there a little early. As a heck of a defensive effort, though. And Todd Donnan got uh, popped as he let the ball go. Those are the kind I'll have you see in the chiropractor or the doctor after the ball game. They walk it off from the line of scrimmage. And the penalty sends the ball to the 18. So after Marshall backed up with penalties, the pass interference 15-yard penalty moves the ball to the 18-yard line. Like the pros, you get it where the, you know, the spot of the foul. 
Seven forty four remaining fourth quarter Youngstown State leads seventeen to three but Marshall is on the move. Donnan looks to run belted down at the fifteen was Todd Donnan. Jeff Powers number thirty six Reggie Lee number fifty six and Leon Jones fifty all in on the play. The last couple of plays Todd Donnan has been wearing Reggie Lee number fifty six. This play powers 36 to see him coming across the screen now plays off the block there. He'll get back into the mix here in a moment. But Lee is outside 56 and 50 is also in on that play. That is Leon Jones. Second and six. Option play. And Donnan stopped after a short game by Jeff Powers and Paul Kahn. A lot of running side to side. The passing game was working pretty uh, effectively for Marshall and uh, now they're trying to run the ball a little bit. I don't understand that. Go back and just flick it in there, you know. And you'd think you if you were going to run, downs. you'd give it to Parker and Pedro, right. who, have who are experienced carried the load for years. Third and five at the 13 yard line. Down to six and a half minutes remaining. Here comes the blitz. They picked it up. He throws. Caught. For first down at the three yard line by Will Brown. The backs get a little nervous when you get down here near the end zone and the receivers start heading towards that corner that they can maybe fade and you run that little comeback route right along the sideline. Gives you the opportunity to catch the ball in good shape also uh, to get out of bounds. Vance Mays made the tackle at the three. First and goal. Marshall looking for his first touchdown of the afternoon. Parker smothered behind the line of scrimmage. Jeff Powers came ripping through the line and the senior from Austin Town Ohio knocked down Parker for a loss back to the four powers is a guy that looks like a linebacker you see without that helmet on he's got everything working <laughs> quite the hairdo yeah got Dyed some of it blonde in front watch him here uh, play off the block of the running back and then just come in and trap the running back number 36 Chris Parker Second and goal from the four. Last play, lost one yard. Parker trying to turn the corner. And he's inside the two, but out of bounds short of the goal line. Jeff Powers again helped to string out the play with help from number eight, Randy Smith. I'm a big believer in when you get down near the goal line, you get inside that five-yard line, Sean, uh, to push straight ahead. The, the further you run to the outside, usually you give the defense the advantage of pursuit and uh, trapping you before you can get to, you know, get to the end zone. You got good hard running inside, use it. You'd have to think that this is four down territory with Marshall trailing by two touchdowns, five and a half minutes remaining. Third and goal from the two. Donnan trying a quarterback sneak from two yards away. And as you might expect, he only got one. I really don't understand that one. Well, you know, when you think about it, that play made about as much yardage as the toss outside. <laughs> there are two linebackers in there, though. So you do have to maybe slant it off tackle. You know, yeah, that's just a waste of a play because how often do you see a quarterback sneak go for more than two yards? Not often. And now Marshall has just used another timeout to discuss the fourth and goal play. If you're wondering on that last play, the quarterback sneak, watch the linebacker slide up inside. Now, this is a quarterback sneak, so you're trying to push up inside, and that's exactly what Marshall does. You say, well, why'd they run a quarterback sneak in this situation? Well, they got some pretty good push up front, but there's just too many people in there. There are four defenders inside that gap between you two guards. So on third and goal from the two, they went for a quarterback sneak. They got a one. Now, with fourth and goal from the one, they're going for it, trailing... 17 to 3 with 524 remaining. They're down to one timeout left. Parker over the top. No signal. And apparently he's been stopped short. The Marshall players were signaling touchdown, but the officials say Youngstown stops them and takes over on down. Keep in mind that 
in order to get into that end zone, the break to play, you have to get through the front of that white line. And Parker thought that obviously that he had the he had his uh, the football over that white line. Let's check it out here. He's gonna launch himself up over the top, going from the eye position. Ball does not break the plane of the end zone from that angle. That's as close as it gets. Now Youngstown just trying to grind it out. And again, they wasted two timeouts on the last drive, so time will run under five minutes after the carry by Brungard. Let's take another peek at this uh, run by Parker, the dive over the top. You can see the ball is down in his stomach. Right. Uh, he's got to reach it out. Goes to the goal line. And it's still in his midsection as he's driven back. He was protecting the football, which is a smart thing to do down there. And unfortunately for him, he just couldn't reach it out and push it over that uh, over the plane of the goal line. Officials stop the clock to confer. The play clock didn't start. Put 4.50 on the clock. The game clock was down to 4.43. They're going to make it 4.50. And Chris Parker ponders the touchdown that might have been. Well, see, what he knows is he got his head over the goal line because you can see that as you're going over. But you have to think of that goal line as a, play, a plane of glass, a uh, pane of glass going straight up, and that football's got to break that plane, not just your head. There's uh, Jeff Parker, uh, Powers. We talked about that unusual hairdo. That's a linebacker look. Said he did it to get the attention of his teammates. He did. <laughs> Undoubtedly, he was successful in that mission. Attention or scare him. Second and nine. Youngstown trying to grind it out, and Smith gets some breathing room out to the six. Marshall will not use its final timeout here. 420 and running. 17-3, Youngstown State. They've led since the 51-yard touchdown run by Darnell Clark on the second play of the game. Mentioned the fact that Chris uh, Parker had come back from a couple of tragedies in his life and uh, fought back and uh, due to his faith really uh, you know, made himself strong again. And had to be strong to settle up with this one, I'm sure. Third and five from the six. Under four minutes remaining. They hand it to the first man, and he did not get the first down. Tamron Smith tackled by Smith. Shannon King. Your Marshall, do you use your last time out here? Yeah, you got to burn it. You know, this is where you really wish you'd save one of those other ones because now you have yourself an opportunity with uh, three minutes and 32 seconds left on the clock uh, to get the ball back and have two timeouts mm -hmm. instead of none now, if you if you call it here. Well, they wasted one when they couldn't get a play in. They wasted another after the bizarre quarterback sneak call on third and goal from the two. And they won't use one here. So Jim Tressel's team can run all the time off the play clock, and apparently they will. Marshall defense did the good thing there and uh, maintained field position at least. Youngstown might take a timeout with one second left on the play clock so they don't pin themselves further back in the end zone, but they won't. They'll take the five-yard walk-off, and that will make it a little bit more difficult in the back of the end zone for Jeff Wilkins. That ball snapped out of the back of that end zone. It's a safety and two points. You go through all these drills on special teams, you never think you're going to get in that situation in the game. The worst guy, the most nervous guy in the house is the snapper, the long snapper now. And it made him a little more nervous and the punter as well by pinning them to the back of the end zone. They are going to take the safety. Jeff Wilkins intentionally taking the safety guard against the block punt with the possibility of great field position and a quick touchdown for Marshall. So it's 17 to 5 in favor of Youngstown and Jim Trestle's club will have the free kick from the 20 yard line when we come back. On your way back to West Virginia, I'm Greg Gumbel in New York with a reminder that coming up next on the NFL today, Terry Bradshaw and I will have the latest sports news and we'll update the playoff picture as it begins to take shape. Leslie Visser visits the Jets to find out where's the beef, while Terry discovers what makes Jimmy Johnson sizzle. When I'm not really happy with things are going, uh, I'm liable to strike out like a snake. It's all coming up next on the NFL today. Now, back to Huntington and the battle for the title. 
Thank you, Greg, and welcome back, everybody. After the safety, Marshall trails Youngstown State 17 to 5. And the free kick up coming from the 20-yard line. Wilkins apparently will put it on a tee rather than punt it for Jim Tressel. I think that was the right strategy, Dan, to take the safety? Yeah, because, you know, you think a touchdown, they get a touchdown, and plus a two-point is still a four-point spread, so uh, that means they need another one still to win the ball game. Wilkins will kick it. Martin is the deep man. Wilkins will run all the way back to the goal line. Jeff says he's been aided in his kicking at Youngstown State by Paul McFadden, who kicked in the NFL for seven years for the Eagles, Falcons, and Giants. Now an assistant athletic director at Youngstown, or color commentator on their radio network. Martin across the 40 and down at the 43-yard line. Martin, Tackled by Chris Inglis and his twin brother Dan, number 49, was also in on the play. So 245 remaining. Jim Tressel hoping for his second national championship ring in three years. And here's what the 91 championship ring of Jim Tressel. If you replace like. the uh, the ruby with the uh, with green, and then you'll know what uh, Marshall's looks That's like right. from last year. Unbelievable uh, record of consistency at both of these schools. Got a player leaving the field. That's Ramon Emil. In the interest of equal time, there there's goes. the Marshall Championship ring from last year. Nice reward for uh, work well done on both sides. A lot of work to do on the Marshall side if they're going to defend their national championship. Down by 12 points with 2.45 remaining. One timeout left for the thundering herd. Down and out of the shotgun on first down. Sets up a screen to Pedro. He got three. It was well defensed by the Penguins, who also did a good job of keeping Pedro in bounds. They'll go without a huddle. Second and seven upcoming. Donnan complete and then dropped by Ricky Carter. The throw was a little bit low. Pass intended for Carter is incomplete. They're spreading the field successfully, but uh, not working to the to the perimeter of receivers, and that's something you've got to do. You know, you're in a situation where you need two touchdowns, and you only got about a minute and 13 seconds left. They'll let you complete everything to the middle of the field. You're just burning up time. Mm -hmm. With the stoppage and play on the incompletion, Marshall went back to the huddle. 2:13 remaining. Donnan deep down the middle and caught. Martin banged down, but he picked up the first down to the 39-yard line of Youngstown State. Andre Mason put the pop on Martin. They stopped the clock to move the chains. 2.06 remaining. First and 10 at the 39. Donnan, again with plenty of time, only a three-man rush, and he ran into trouble. He had more time in the pocket, but elected to hang on to it and step up, and he lost two yards. And he had Martin open underneath Tim Martin, number one, was floating around five or six yards downfield. And Don and Hurd on the play. And Marshall has used its last timeout with a minute 53 remaining. We'll return to the Division I AA National Championship game right after this. Our crew thought they spotted Deion Sanders on the Youngstown State <laughs> sideline, number 21. But he had a third job. <laughs> that is actually uh, number 21 for uh, Youngstown, Ron Pearson. He was the, the wide receiver. Nephew of the great Drew Pearson and the cousin of Eric Metcalf of the Cleveland Browns. Minute 53 remaining. No timeouts left for Marshall. The Youngstown State leads 17 to 5. 
in what they've been billing as the rubber match. Third year in a row that these two schools have been in the Division I AA National Championship game. And if it stays this way, Jim Donnan will have some questions to answer about some of the play selections and clock management along the way. Yep. Youngstown State has controlled the game from the start. Marshall has moved the ball with little to show for it in the second half. Donnan looking deep for Will Brown. Intercepted! Vance Mays, the junior from Indianapolis. And the Youngstown State Penguins are on their way to their second national championship in three years. Vance Mays was supposed to start today, and then it was a late uh, adjustment there where Reggie Brown, number seven, started in his place. And here, Todd Dunnan is going to try to loft the ball. He had trips to the right, and he tries to go back to the left after a long delay, and that gives everyone in the secondary time to react up. I thought he was going to signal for the fair catch down here. The ball was up in the air so long. Mays makes the pick off and a nice little run back, slides down, makes sure he doesn't make a mistake with it. Second interception of the year for Vance Mays. Now leading by 12, and with Marshall out of timeouts, the Penguins have a chance to run out the clock. There was a penalty after the interception for unsportsmanlike conduct on each team. Offsetting penalties, so the ball is still at the 10-yard line. There's the bucket. They're going to get Coach Tressel. Run guard takes a knee, and Marshall can't do anything about it. <laughs> Coach Russell says, wait a minute. It's not over just yet. Not willing to break into a smile. It was just like water off a penguin's back. Yes, it was. You know, it really was a surprise year for Marshall to get back to the championship as we talked to everyone about the program. and They thought this was going to be a rebuilding year. What a great effort on the part of the Thundering Herd to get back into the championship game and at their own park. So they would have been happy just to make the playoffs. They lost four All-Americans to graduation at the end of last year. Did Jim Donnan. Three of those players have gone on to the NFL. As I said before, two outstanding coaches, two outstanding staffs, and they produce good football team. And the doubly good news of your Youngstown State fan it would appear that Coach Jim Tressel is not taking the job at the University of Cincinnati. And he'll be back to lead the Penguins toward a defense of their second national championship. Third and 13 upcoming. I know why he didn't want that water on him. He had a little time to wait out there. He's going to yeah. get cold. It is chilly now in the 40 degree range. And at age 40, Jim Wallace, uh, Jim Tressel out of Baldwin Wallace, where his father coached for 23 years and won a national championship. He has won his second. They're the only father and son coaches to win national football titles. And they're ready to give him the ride off the field. But the game clock still shows 33 seconds remaining. And they've added to that now. They put 46 back on the clock. Sometime, uh, the clock was stopped because uh, some debris was thrown on the field as well. Jim Tressel, already in the words of most of the people we spoke to in the Youngstown State Traveling Party, the most popular man in Youngstown, Ohio, will only add to his reputation as he brings another national championship back to Youngstown. This will be the last snap. The rubber match goes to the Youngstown State Penguins and Jim Tressel as they make it two out of three in the 1AA National Championship game over the last three years against Marshall.
We'll be back with the presentation from Huntington, West Virginia, right after this.